podcast you are listening to let it out with me your host katie dalebout and happy thanksgiving week thank you so much for listening i want to thank everyone who's new to the podcast also for listening i hope you like it i hope you check out the archives i have almost 200 episodes and i'm so glad you're here if you like it let me know share it with a friend and if you are a longtime listener Thank you so much. This is my favorite thing I've ever done. I've been hosting this podcast since 2013, and at that time, not a lot of people knew what podcasts were. It was pre-serial. They definitely weren't as popular as they are now, but I was listening to them a lot because I was really lonely, so I found a lot of comfort in them, and the hosts became my friends in my mind. I learned a lot. I discovered a lot of new people through the guests on these podcasts, and eventually I was like, you know what, I could do that, and I started my own, and here we are, almost five years later, almost 200 episodes later, and I have a fresh episode for you this week with recipe developer and food stylist based in New York, Rachel Mansfield. You probably follow her and her simple and delicious recipes on Instagram. I sure do, and I can attest to them being delicious and simple, but definitely delicious because they're definitely simple as well. But anyway, you guys, I got to try her banana skillet cookie situation that she had just made the day I came over and recorded this. And it was amazing. I was rationing it through the week. It was so good. She's great. We've been hanging out a bit. I went to the class with her last week, which I loved. And she's a really lovely person. And I want to get to this episode as quickly as possible, but first I have some announcements for you. Thank you everyone who listened to last week's episode with me rambling and telling you secrets that I haven't told before in the podcast and things I was afraid to tell you. I was so nervous to put that episode out and you guys were all really nice, which makes me so happy. If you haven't listened to that one, go back and listen to it. Maybe if you want to, I think you would like it. And if you're new, still go back and listen to it. Sure, why not? I just am so happy that it's such a supportive, great community. And speaking of community, in the secret Facebook group, you guys have been asking and talking about, since I moved to New York City, doing a podcast listener meetup. And on Instagram, we've been talking about that. And and here you go. It's happening. And not only is it happening, there are two things happening in the same week. So... It's probably not a good idea to have two events happening in the same week, but you know what? When it rains, it pours. So I'm having two events just a couple days apart. The first one is a week from tomorrow, if you're listening to this, the day it comes out, on Thursday, November 30th from 6.30 to 7.30 in New York City in Manhattan at Springbone, which is one of my favorite restaurants. You'll hear all about it in next week's episode because the founders, Sam and Jordan, are next week's guests, but... I will be doing a meetup, a little happy hour, if you will, there where we can all hang out and have snacks and snuggle and just be together and meet each other. I think it'll be really chill and nice, and I I hope you come. Maybe Rachel will come too. She actually loves the place as well. She has a menu item on the menu, and they're also likely going to be launching a special Let It Out item. So please come, bring your friends bring your kids, bring your mom, bring whoever. I hope to see you guys from 6.30 to 7.30. And then that Saturday, December 2nd, it's my friend Laura's birthday and she's going to be there. Anyway, we're going to be at Divya's Kitchen in the East Village and it's an Ayurvedic restaurant and I'll be doing a live podcast episode with the founder and the chef, Divya herself. She's also a cookbook author and has a really interesting story. So I'm going to be interviewing her and her co-founder, and then we can all have brunch after, which I think will be really fun. I've never eaten brunch there. I eat there all the time and get their takeout all the time because it's in my neighborhood, but I've never eaten brunch there, so I think it'll be great for us all to have brunch together. It's going to be 20% off for Let It Out listeners, which is lovely, and we can all hang out. 
I can't wait. Hopefully you're excited. So mark your calendar for November 30th, Thursday at 6.30, and then on Saturday, December 2nd at 9.45, we'll get there, and then we'll do the podcast, and then we'll have brunch. It'll be lovely. It'll be such a great day. I'm going to have books there available so I can sign them, and you can buy them if you want for the holidays or if you just need a copy of my book. If you're new to the podcast, I wrote a book. It's called Let It Out, A Journey Through Journaling, available at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, wherever you buy books. It's about journaling. Anyway. It's 55 journaling exercises, prompts. Let's get to today's episode. I've rambled enough. I hope to see you guys next week. And I hope you have the best Thanksgiving. This episode with Rachel, I really enjoyed. She's a lovely person, like I said. But we don't just talk about food and cookies, unfortunately. (laughs) But that would have been fun as well. But we also talk about relationships and our relationships to our body as women and as people and we talk about how she got fired from her job at 25 and then what happened next in entrepreneurship and how she's become what she has as an entrepreneur and it's really inspiring and I think you'll you'll really like it. I thought this episode was great to release this week since the holidays are upon us if you will and you're probably cooking you're probably going to something Rachel's website is a great resource to find a dish that is going to wow the people that you're with. You should probably make something from her website. There's so many things on there. Check it out. See what you think, what you want to make, and make it. And then tag her because she will definitely be excited to see your post. And so will I. And you know what? Actually, send me some of whatever you made from her website because I would love to eat it. That would be great. I love you guys. I hope you have the best Thanksgiving ever and oh also rachel has a guide of new york city which you should check out i'll put the link in the show notes of her favorite places and springbone where we're doing the meetup next week is one of her favorite places all right let's get to today's episode but first let's talk about the sponsors today's episode is brought to you in part by care of vitamins It's so hard to get all of your nutritional needs from food. Even if you try your hardest, you might still need to fill the gaps with some supplements. And that's why Care-of is the best. I love them. I use them. They send you your supplements in these personalized daily packs, which is so convenient, especially for travel if you're traveling over the holidays. And they say your name on them, the packaging's amazing, and they're so easy to use. They source the best ingredients in their vitamins and supplements, and you actually save money compared to buying them at health food stores. They make it easy. You can go to their website, takecareof.com, and you get your personalized recommendation by taking a really simple quiz that asks you questions about your lifestyle, your sleep, your energy levels, your bowel movements, and then from there, they curate for you a custom vitamin package, which I love. Use the code Katie to get 50% off your first order. That's half off your first order when you go to takecareof.com and enter the code Katie. That's my name, K-A-T-I-E. Thank you so much, Careof. We love you in this family. This episode is also brought to you in part by Franklin and Whitman. They are the all-natural, plant-based, preservative-free, cruelty-free brand of skincare and hair care, and men's grooming, and even pet products that I love. They have a social mission which pledges to donate 5% of all of their sales to dog rescue organizations all across the country. They are so great. I love their products. I use their face serum every single night. Their face masks are amazing, and they use a superfood as the first ingredient in every single one. So think matcha and cacao and turmeric in their face masks, things you would want to eat. I love their products. I love their founder, Chris. He's actually been a guest on the podcast a few guests ago. So listen to that. Learn more about them. I couldn't say enough good things about them. So I'll just, I'll leave it at that. But if you want to check them out, make sure you use the code Katie at checkout for 20% off your order. That's K-A-T-I-E for 20% off your order. Thank you, Frank and Wint. I love you guys so much, and I'm so grateful that you're a sponsor. Well, thank you again for doing this. I'm so yeah. excited. Thank you. I'm excited, too. I was trying to... So today, I like spent the day with you. I listened to you on Georgie's podcast, which oh, was gosh. amazing. Oh, gosh. You're probably sick of me by no. now. No. <laughs> I've been like excited to come over here. 
And I told Jordan, I was texting with Jordan yesterday because it was her birthday. And yeah. I was like, I'm hanging out with your friend. And, and she was like, oh my gosh, give her a hug. For I me. was literally just on the phone with her. Oh, that's, that's so, so weird. Yeah. That's so, so funny. So anyway, I've been excited to, I was trying to figure out how I found following you on Instagram. And I've been following you for so long that I don't exactly know, but I'm assuming maybe through Jordan, but maybe who knows Jordan and I go way back so yeah well either way we're here and I I think this conversation is going to be so great so I I've been loving starting these conversations with the present before we get into your history and where you're going so what has been on your mind lately what have you been thinking about pondering realizing in the past week or month but as recently as you can go um, the first thing that comes to mind is like stress levels, mm. which is like kind of an, a blah place to start. But I um, personally found out last week that I have very high cortisol levels. Mm. So for the last, I would say it's been like eight or nine days, I've been really trying to slow down and yeah. calm down and like live in the moment more and actually be present yeah so something's going on in the present is actually I'm trying to live more in the present and not be so like anxious about what's happening yeah. in the future and what happened in the past yeah. um and have more like balance in my life which I don't really believe in that much balance but like I have to find the balance that works for me yeah it's, it's funny that you bring that up because I have that same sort of thing of constantly mm. thinking and thinking to the next thing. Yes. And I love doing this podcast actually because these conversations force me for the sometimes are two hours long, mm-hmm. force me to be present with this person and with my phone else. off. Like if I yes. think of something else or get distracted, I sound dumb. So like I can't, exactly. you know, like I, it forces me. To be present. And so I think that's, that's so something that is hard for anyone, no matter what your job is, but especially working from home and being an entrepreneur and yeah. just being someone who's a person in the world and having an eye telephone. It's mm-hmm. hard. <laughs> no, for sure. And that's, I actually purposely wanted to sit in the seat because I don't want to know what time it is during the mm. whole thing. And I don't have a clock anywhere here. My phone is over there plugged in so like when I do these I just don't want to do anything else that's a good point yeah my eyes (laughs) aren't my I don't have my glasses on and I can't see the clock either that's okay (laughs) (laughs) okay so I want to so you've recently moved your place is amazing we're sitting here in your apartment it's beautiful you're my first like guest guest of someone I really don't know coming here (laughs) it's it's always so funny when I've been doing these around the city now I'll go to a lot of people's offices if they're a doctor or like a practitioner but then other people I'll go to their their homes and I think because of social media I've met so many I'm sure you have too so many people from the internet who have become great friends of mine Mm -hmm. who I like genuinely love but that first meeting it's always kind of funny like you just like had me to your home like I, I'm not but like I could be a serial yeah. killer or I've just gotten coffee <laughs> with someone who like I have no idea but you get a feeling I think from the internet and yeah you do I mean I've cultivated so many amazing relationships via Instagram yeah. it's insane and when I will travel and go to various things for work like I share a bed with a girl that I've met via Instagram like my really good friend we traveled and that was the first time I ever met her in person we literally shared a room and a bed it's amazing. And I don't even know you, but like I do know you, so it's so crazy. And yeah. I think that also doing this has made me more comfortable even just establishing relationships with people just in everyday life because yeah. I'm seeing how easy and amazing it is to find people that you love and trust and that you connect with via Instagram and blogging or whatever. So when I'm like out and about or I want to call like someone or something, like it's so much, it's like a sense of comfort and ease. Yeah. And you don't get that, that, you know, being a solo entrepreneur, like you need that connection and you need community. And I was thinking about that on the way over here. I was like, I'm so excited to, you're like the first person I've really interacted with today. Yeah. And it's (laughs) it's so nice to have this. And I'm so glad that you're amazing and great because I think it's kind of that feeling of, you know, that, that quote they say, don't meet your idols, you know, it would be such a bummer if I met you after following you for so long and loving your Instagram and your recipes, if you weren't what you would appear and like exclusive for people listening, she's amazing. (laughs) Thank you. Do not call me your idol. Don't worry. I'm like 
not like that. It's so funny when people mean, say that. So I just awkward. mean in, in person, like meeting no, people that 100%. you admire or that you just follow. It's and like it, the facade of them could be like ruined. And yeah. Then like, which, ha- it, I mean, realistically, it happens. I've met a lot of people me too. that I was friends with early on in this space that I'm not friends with anymore because you get to know them and you're like, oh no, that like wasn't what I anticipated. Yeah. And that's, that's been my experience with this podcast. You know, I'll, I'll have people on who I either not even look up to and like, I don't idolize them. I'm just connected with them because I enjoy their work or their book meant a lot to me or their movies meant a lot to me. And then if I have them on and usually this is never the case, but every once in a while, you know, the person doesn't, you know, ask me a question about me as we're ending or doesn't, you know, say mm-hmm. thank you or, and it's just like, it's, like eh, it's okay, <laughs> but it's just like a little bit of a bummer because their work was meaningful to me in some way and yeah. that kind of can ruin it. So 100%. anyway, all right, well now I want to zoom the lens back a little bit. Okay. So did you grow up in, in New York? Did you grow uh, up in New the Jersey. East Coast? Okay. So I'm from like the Princeton area. My okay. mom and dad are like about 45, 50 minutes from here. Oh, perfect. So it was like one step closer to them moving out of the city. Yeah. When did you, did you always, so you used to live in Manhattan. Yes. When did you, did growing up, did you come to the city a lot? Did you always know you wanted yeah. to live in New York? My parents took us into the city a lot, whether it was like just to go to dinner or walk around or just really be here and where I live in New Jersey there's not really much to do it's kind of a boring-esque town and my parents are the type of people that like to go 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 and try new things and travel a lot and everything so we would go into the city a lot and I always knew that I'd live in the city it was never like yeah maybe I'll live there after college like it was pretty like it was a definite in my head so we moved into Jordan and I my husband moved into the city like 2015 I believe um, or 2014, late 2014, um, and stayed there for three years and then moved to Hoboken. How did you decide, was that a tough decision to decide to move here outside of to the Hoboken? city? To Hoboken? Well, not, it, I guess yes and no. It was a pretty like quick decision. Yeah. Honestly, we got sick of paying rent yeah. and it just got so old after a while. We had, um, our first apartment was 450 square feet. Where were you? In Chelsea. Okay. And we were there for two years. I loved, that was like our first city apartment. It was gorgeous. It was well above our means of the building we were living in. And by the end of the two years, we were kind of like, we're done here. Like, we need to move out of this neighborhood. We moved down to Battery Park, which I loved even more than Chelsea. Like, it was so quaint and, like, clean. I always joked you could hear a pin drop. It was just so quiet, which is nice to have that part of the city when you're in the hustle and bustle all the time. Um, and then that was a studio as well. And I work from home. I just needed more space. I yeah. needed a pantry. And it's funny because my parents always were like, well, you're not really getting that much more space moving to an apartment in Hoboken. But to go to a studio, from two studios, like 450 square feet to 600 square feet, and now we're in two bedrooms, it just... It's like, Jord, where are you? I don't even know. We have yeah. two different bathrooms. It's just ample room for activities. Yeah, I mean, working from home is one thing, but working from home when your kitchen is kind of your office in New York has to yeah. be rough. So here you have a full, beautiful, I'm staring at it, Thanks. kitchen. My <laughs> that has to be so joy. helpful. It's funny because my bedroom is not even close to being done, and I don't, to be honest with you, I don't care about my yeah. bedroom. I just cared about my kitchen, and we redid a bunch of things before we moved in and redid the floors, and really made like a home for us so we could stay yeah. here for a while oh, yeah I love that did you still go into the city and go back and forth yeah probably one a couple weeks ago I went seven still seven days in a row um yeah. I would say four to five days I'm trying to do max I haven't found a workout studio <laughs> in yeah I was gonna say you're doing the class Yes, which I love. love. Yeah. Oh, really? We should go. Yeah, let's I love do it. the class. Um, I was there this morning. I haven't been in New York yet. The only time I ever went was really? in LA. So oh I'm, my gosh. I would love to. Let's Anytime you want to come, it's amazing. And cool. I'm on like a big class, like bender right now, I keep calling it. I'm like, <laughs> I don't sign up for like the next day. And then like that night, I put myself on the waiting list and like pray that I get in because I just keep craving it. And the energy, it's like almost a workout more for your mind and yeah. your soul, I think, more than, it's pretty rigorous on your body, but like, in like a calming way, I yeah. don't know. I, I felt the, so great after I did it. Don't you feel like it high? Was, yeah, it almost. was, yeah. It's so like liberating and it's actually, I mean, it's not that far for me to get to, it's just, I'm a 15 minute walk to the path, give or take, 
And then if the path is there, it could be like 10 minutes into the, into the World Trade Center or five minutes if I take the other path line, which goes right into Christopher Street. Easy. So I go there on bar three. Um, and then I try and coordinate the days that I have like in-person meetings or anything that's appointments, anything in the city so it's in the same day. So yeah. I'm not going back. I refuse to like go into the city in the morning, come back to Hoboken and then go back. Like, yeah. It's just that too doesn't much. Make sense. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, well, it's so easy to, I mean, today I get so much traffic, but no, if you, so if you do it and you get to know it, I'm sure that like wouldn't be exactly. an issue when you're close enough and tonight the best of both worlds. Yeah. Exactly. So going back to when you originally moved, so where did you go to school? So you grew up in New Jersey. I went to school at Muhlenberg College, which is a very small liberal okay. arts college in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Okay. How do you haven't heard of it? It was the 13th school I applied to, and I found it really late, um, like, in the application game. I was working with, like, a college advisor to help me figure out schools, and I literally applied to 13 colleges, then found Muhlenberg, and went to the campus, fell in love with it. It was the only small school that I applied to. Only 2,500 people go there. My, like, high school was the same size as Muhlenberg. Yeah. Uh, and all the other schools I wanted to go to were large. It was like BU, Rutgers, like not yeah. Muhlenberg. And I went there and I loved it. It was like such a bubble, but it was perfect for what I wanted at that time. What were you studying? I did, I wanted to double major, which was also a huge reason to go like to a liberal arts school because it's not two different colleges, it's not colleges within the college, right, if right, that right. makes sense. So yeah. I did business administration with marketing and then media communications. So what did you, well, first of all, what did you want to do as a kid when you grew up? It's so funny you asked this because I was just working on a project and I just wrote in the paragraph, my mom, I I asked my mom what I wanted to be when I grew up and she literally said like, not like I never said anything. I never said like firefighter or actress or teacher. I just wanted to be like successful. I just wanted to a career and I wanted to be like. I, I always like just wanted to make a living um, for myself. Now. Yeah, and, and which is so then funny. You couldn't say social media or blogging because I want to be an Instagram exist. food creator. Like, yeah. <laughs> I still don't even know what to title myself. Um, Me neither. <laughs> so I mean, I feel like titles are overrated. If you wake up every day, do what you love, or making an income doing it, that's all you can ask yes, for. It doesn't totally matter. Outrage. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I didn't go to school for anything. I tried to be as broad and general as possible, so that way I was able to dabble in a lot of different classes and find something to do. So what did you think you were going to do when you graduated? Literally nothing. Like, I had no idea. Was that um, a scary time? Well, I interned at an advertising agency for two summers. In New York? Um, yeah, it was in New York. I lived in Staten Island with my grandparents and commuted into the city. Jordan, um, his family coincidentally lives on the same street as my grandparents. Oh, I mean, so didn't know you guys that. In college? He met at Muhlenberg. Okay. He told me where he was from. I was like, "Oh, my grandparents live there." Blah blah blah. And it turns out that he, his family, and my grandparents live in the same neighborhood. Like oh my they're, god! They like know each other. What a small world! So weird. It's like was like in That's so the magical. stars. Like yeah. I don't know. It was so crazy. Um, so yeah, I lived, that was like a huge reason why I was like comfortable living with my grandparents. Yeah. I mean, living there yeah. like, at the age of like 20 and 21 isn't the most like fun So thing. he was home for the summer. Exactly. Oh, so it was wonderful. Um, so I did the advertising agency, which was for healthcare, like pharmaceuticals. Okay. They offered me a job. So I accepted it. It was like, great. I have something. This was like also right after the time where it was hard to get a job. Mm-hmm. I think we're the um, same age. Did you graduate in 2012? Yeah. College? Yeah, me too. Okay, cool. So it was like jobs were coming about, totally. but I still also didn't know what I wanted to do. So I figured I might as well have a job while I'm looking for a job. Yeah. Um, my parents Smart. always joke that I, they didn't put any pressure on me to find a job. Like I could have graduated, moved back home with them. Things would have been fine. I had put so much pressure on myself to find a job, like get out there, do something. Like I was not graduating without saying that I had something. Was it because you wanted to move to New York? I didn't even move to New York at first. Um, my The job was in Manhattan, mm-hmm. but I went back with my grandparents. I'm very scrappy. Like, I like to save money. I don't like to say that I'm cheap because I buy nice things when I want them, but I do try and cut corners and save yeah. costs, save money, like, whenever possible. And I moved back with my grandparents, commuted into the city, liked my job didn't love it like loved the people I worked with they were so wonderful but had no passion for what I was doing I was like colonoscopy preps and ulcerative colitis and (laughs) just boring at the age of 22 like you don't want to do that 
And I was like a binge soda drinker, like had basically an IV of Diet Coke, like injected into my arm, like loved it. <laughs> Fountain Diet Coke was my jam. Um, and I was in a Whole Foods with my dad. He picked up um, a product when we were in the store and asked me to try it. I fell in love with it, wrote a letter to the CEO and founder, just like thanking them for getting me off of diet soda. And long story short, I was working in their office like two weeks later. I left wow. the job in the city, moved back home with my mom and dad because their office was like um, closer to my parents than, than, than my grandparents. Commuted there and was his assistant. Loved it. I loved the brand and I had such a passion for the movement that they were doing. And it was kind of my foot in the door in the foot in, in the food and wellness space because I had such a passion for the food that I was eating. I was still trying to find my place in like what kind of food I wanted to eat, what yeah. foods made me feel good. Um, and that was my way, my way in and I loved it. It was amazing. I learned so much. I was like a sponge absorbing everything that I could without even realizing how much I was learning because when you're in a, it was a startup company. It was like eight of us. 12, like eight around eight people in the office it was like so small and you really dabble in all aspects of the business so I was able to learn things for sales like investor relations marketing anything and yeah. it was really cool to get to see that from like the CEO and founders perspective um and when I was there they didn't have an Instagram account and this is when Instagram was starting mm-hmm. to like be something so I started the brand's Instagram, just like mm-hmm. on the side, being the assistant. Like, yeah, yeah. I'll just take cute pictures and post them. Like, I so love doing this. So like 2013, 2014? Um, this is 2013, probably. Okay. Um, and started doing that. They didn't have like a marketing department of sorts. It was like very small. Um, and then eventually I started their blogger and influencer program because I myself have been a lover, a longtime reader of blogs, like Jordan from The Balanced Bond, who we were talking about earlier, like that was my favorite blogger. Like I loved following her, which is funny because now she's truly one of my best friends, which is so funny how it just like happened from there. And I started sending bloggers the product and engaging with them and seeing from the brand side, like how we can work with bloggers. And I saw that this was going to be something. And this is now that's four years ago, almost five years ago. That was early. That was before brands were really even paying bloggers. But I was like, no, we need to pay them. This is how they make a living. Like it's basically paid publicity. Um, I kept saying bloggers are the new PR. Yeah. So then that spiraled into me running the earned media department for the brand. And I moved back into the city just because that's where a, a lot of the, bloggers and influencers were a lot of the events I was managing the PR agency that was in the city just there was nothing for me in the New Jersey office anymore yeah so I started working from the Manhattan um started to see how expensive it was to live in Manhattan and I was living with my fiance at the time and I looked at Jordan and I'm like I'm not making enough money like I cannot work for this this company yeah be working these hours and not making enough money like yeah. this isn't right so I asked for a raise I was rejected and I pitched myself. I said, you know, I've done X, Y, and Z. Like I'm a huge asset to this company. I've been here for a long time. If I was working at another company, I'd be making like this amount of money. So you like, like had your ducks in the line. Yeah. And had and this conversation. My gut told me I was worth more. Like I just, I felt very undervalued and extremely yeah. undercompensated. So I started to look for other jobs. Um, I didn't find anything that I was as passionate about as they as that job I actually went and got a different job and then went back to this job because I like missed it so much oh wow and I looked at Jordan and I'm like we need I need to do something like maybe I'll walk dogs maybe I'll like babysit or why don't I just deliver overnight oats to people in Manhattan like do something so that's when Jordan recommended I start posting overnight oat and oatmeal recipes on my Instagram account and see what happens so he was like, and you do not have time to be delivering these. I think he was also like, thing. you need a commercial kitchen that's illegal to <laughs> make it in our kitchen in our 400 square foot apartment and deliver it via like Tupperware and mason jars. Yeah. So I started posting the recipes and it just spiralized from there. Um, and eventually I was fired from my job. Okay, um, wait, we can't gloss over that. I know. It's like <laughs> I want to just casually say it. But um, yeah, it was fi- De- December is my two year anniversary of working for myself. December, I think 7th. 
Um, 2015. Oh, I was fired from my job. Party. We oh, should I'm, go do the class. So. Oh, epic rager we'll be Amazing. having on that day. Great. I was thinking about that in the class this morning, actually, what I'm going to do for my firing um anniversary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, what do I call this? Like, we should know. do it, like, have a whole theme around, like, lit and, like, yeah, like, spicy Yeah, I love it. Stuff. That's a good idea. Um, so I walked, I walked into a meeting. It was, like, a three-hour meeting. At the end of the meeting, my boss called me into like, it wasn't even an office. We were at like a third party agency that we worked with because my team was based in um, like just outside of the city. And so hold on, before we get to, so you had, you had been working for this company for how long? Two years. Two years. And then you went away for a second to work for a different company. About came three weeks. Came back. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, happy to have you back. You yes. had asked for that raise and they said no. Mm-hmm. I asked for the raise before I left. And then and that, no. and you were like, okay. And you just were like, that's fine. And kept working for them. Mm-hmm. And then you're, you find yourself on December 7th in this long meeting. Yeah. And what happens from there? So I just also just got married in that September. Sweet. Just got married. I was doing Instagram. I had probably like t- around 10,000 followers. I was trying to figure it out last night. Like the, actually like the growth and the timeline. Um, so it wasn't enough to pay the bills. I was making like $50 a post. It was like babysitting money. I kept saying it would fuel my like kombucha addiction. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't enough to, for me to make a living. And I also just, I don't know. It just wasn't, wasn't enough at the time. Of course. Yeah. And they felt it was going to be a conflict of interest and they fired me. Um, so I walked onto seventh Avenue and it was like, I'm 25. And I'm unemployed. I was just fired. So that was the reason of being fired was because you had this side business? Mm-hmm. So did they know about that from the beginning? Yeah. they. I mean, they knew because I started when I was there. Um, a lot. It's very common for a lot of brands for their social media or anyone that works there to have like a side Instagram account, yeah. especially nowadays where it's such a saturated market. Yeah. So many people have a food Instagram. Like, it was crazy. Yeah. There was a lot more like political in, like stuff that... I mean, I can tell you about later. Yeah, we'll um, talk about after yeah. class. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just they told that was the reasoning that I was given, and wow. at the time I was very, very upset because I felt so comfortable. I was happy. I was like, you know what? I have something I'm passionate about. I have a job I'm passionate about. I just got married. Yeah. Like, we'll make it work right so now. Like, for it's the fine. Holidays. Do, I hope. I just hope no one ever – it will happen, but I just hope that no one gets fired around the holidays again because Ugh. nobody's hiring. Like, unless you want to go work at J. Crew or right. Zara or, like, retail, which I wasn't going to do. And even that, because I, I worked at J. Crew for a quick second after college, you have to yeah, apply for too. that in, like, uh, October, like mm-hmm. now. There oh was nothing. God. So I was actually nervous to even call Jordan and tell him because – Jordan's very sensitive like he he's like the yeah. nicest person anyone will ever meet like he's just like he like feels for you yeah. and I was so scared so I called my dad and I called my mom just hysterically crying and like heaving you know when you're crying so hard you yes, like can't it talk hurts. and like yes. it hurts, like in this area yeah. yeah and it was around one o'clock I remember like because oh. I remember like being hungry for lunch but I was like I need to eat something but like I feel so sick like <laughs> I'm like I don't know what to do which makes it worse when you're hungry yes. and feeling lots of feelings. Yes. I remember this day so vividly, which is so funny because I don't have the best memory. Like, I have, like, I get brain frog, which is, like, a totally different topic. But, um, yeah, I was like, this is nuts. And I didn't know what to do. I was so depressed. I wouldn't see anybody. I wouldn't talk to anyone. You would have thought someone died. Like, that's how yeah. I, re- like, acted to this. But I think well, it's because... it's very jarring. And you're so young. It's like, I'm 25 and fired. Yeah. Like, I'm not, like, I wasn't laid off. Like, I was fired. So there's a difference between, like, the companies, like, cutting people, like, laying people off. Like, we can't afford you. It's more right. like, we don't want you. We don't like you. Bye. And especially this company that you had such a relationship with to the point that yeah. you worked with the founder. You had written this letter. You obviously really genuinely liked the product. Exactly. That sounds really painful. It was, it was, like. Part of your identity, almost. Yeah, for sure. And it was, it was almost like, I feel like. It was traumatizing for me. I just was so... People, you know, the first thing when you see someone you haven't seen in a while, oh, how's work? Like, who the heck wants to be like, oh, just got fired. Oh, well, can't even afford to be eating dinner with you right now. Um, Mm -hmm. So I basically sulked for like three weeks. And then I was sitting at a pizza place in Chelsea. It's like still one of my favorite places. It's actually on my like guide because I used to go there all the time. And 
sitting with my mom and dad and Jord, and I'm like, what the hell am I going to do? Like, I'm, I don't want to get another job. I just don't have the desire to go work for another office. Like, you I just feel that. so hope. Yeah, I'm like, they're, I'm not going to stop posting pictures of oatmeal. Like, that's, like, all I kept thinking. And my mom was like, just go out on your own and just do it. And you know when your mom's telling you something to do and you're just like, shut up. Like, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, my mom, my dad, and Jord... Good all for said to me, so supportive. I know, I don't get it. They were like, just go out on your own, give it six months. If you fail, get a different job, but put yourself out there, like That's see what can so happen. Great. And I'm just like, what? Like you're out of your mind. And are I, your parents entrepreneurial? No, like they're very, very smart people. But like yeah. my dad's always worked for him, um, worked for a company. Like they have like different like side things where they have like any, like real estate and mm-hmm. things like that, but. I think that my parents just know that I have a very strong personality and that I don't accept failure. Yeah. I don't, I'm don't. i not a perfectionist because I don't do things till they're perfect. It's more just like I want to succeed, like I want to yeah. be something. And they knew that I wouldn't just become a slump sitting on, like yeah. watching Netflix all day and like eating potato chips. Like they knew it's I'd be so, doing something. Yeah, it's not, I, I relate to that a lot. My mom says about me that I'm disciplined. Yes. Like I, I have a really good sense of, if I decide that this is on my to-do list, it's going to get done. Like, I will yes. move heaven and earth to, like, make it happen. Exactly. And, yeah, which I think, unlike perfectionism, I think it can actually be, oh, which perfectionism is a whole different conversation, yeah. but I think it it can be really motivating in that specific arena of working, exactly. starting something. Yes. It, because you have no one telling you you have to do it. No, and that's the biggest struggle of being an entrepreneur by yourself is that there's no one that's telling you what to do, when yeah. to do it, how to get it done. Like, there's no boss. You need to be disciplined. Like, I could easily sleep till 11 o'clock every day and go on my email for an hour, but, like, no, I'm up at 7.38. I mean, which some people think it's late. I think that that's, like, fine. You don't have a commute. Exactly. 7.38, like, I get everything done when I need to get it done. I do work in advance. I do all my recipes four to six weeks out for the most part. Mm. Everything's like in place and I'm always forecasting my work for like, I'm already forecasting for 2018. I'm like not even accepting more work for this year. I'm like, I'm done like for right now and just trying to really, it's almost the point I'm so disciplined with work that it prevents me from living in the moment because I'm like trying to always plan, plan, plan. I relate to that a lot. Yeah. Do you feel like your time working for another company and seeing a brand being built and working on the other side, now you're working with brands from the opposite side, Mm -hmm. do you feel like that gave you a leg up in what you're doing now? And just the discipline of like working in a corporate, working in an office for someone else? Yes, absolutely. I think that working for the CEO of that company was like the best grooming for what I'm doing today because when it came to just having like brand like vent he called them vendor partners like I have brand partners and really learning how to run a business and be yeah. a people person and establish relationships with others and work with brands and just treat people like they are your friends and they're your families it's just I think that he's insane and he has a lot of negative aspects to him but yeah I learned so much I'm like he's the smartest person I've ever met yeah like it, I think for anyone to be around someone that intelligent is I feel very lucky for that I worked very hard for it but like I that was a huge like it, it groomed me to be doing this yeah. and he always said to people that like he knew I'd be doing something successful mm-hmm. I remember <laughs> I when I went to go get another job like when I left that company to go to a different company and then before I went back yeah when I was telling him over the phone because I wanted to go in person but my boss was like no you need to call and blah blah whatever so I call him he's like Rachel you're gonna have a very successful future but it's not where this new company is that you're going like I remember him saying that to me like you're gonna be successful you have a bright future it's just not what you think it is right now and he would always say that to me like I when I would when I asked for more money he's like you're so young like you have time like you're gonna do it you're gonna do it you have time and I still think that I was very undercompensated so I think that he was right in the fact where he knew that there was something in my future which I didn't see but I don't like I don't even remember where I'm like going at that but basically yes it did groom me and shape me for what I was for what I'm doing that's really interesting so has that is that person still in your life Mm -mm. as like a mentor 
Absolutely not. I think if my mom saw him on the street, she'd punch him in the face. I think I will too after Yeah. This. I think I would just like keep walking. I don't really know what I would do. Has he, <laughs> has him or anyone from the company tried to reach out to work with you now? No, I'm probably like flagged um, like with like <laughs> signs all over not to, which is funny because they definitely could. It's in the space. It's definitely like yeah. on brand to say the least. Um, but I definitely know that they have me like flagged and there's a lot of my friends that I would, who I would see on the street and absolutely talk to and give a huge hug to, they still work there and I'm sure it's still like a smaller yeah. enough company where they know. Yeah. There's probably like Not some new, new intern that's like, look at this girl. She's amazing to work with. And they oh, have, to be, like, <laughs> they have oh to be like, oh my God. Well, we, we Awkward. can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. So going back to that transition. So Christmas comes and goes, you're at that mm -hmm. pizza place with your family. You decide you're going to try this and you have yeah. this, you know, somewhat relative to people, small following comparative to what you have today. What was that feeling like and, and how did you handle something I think about a lot transitioning from a full-time job with the financial security and the consistency yes. that comes with that and the uncertainty that comes with being a freelancer or working for yourself. How do you handle that compared to it going from a salary position to working for yourself and how like mentally what are some ways that you back then and now handle that? It, that's a very good question because I don't know how I handled that and I'm not the type of person that would handle that well. Like I love and crave consistency to the point where it's like me a too. problem how much I want yeah, consistency. Me too. And I, I think because I was able to collect unemployment, which was mm. huge, and unemployment was also the same salary as I was making at the last job. So that just oh, shows how great. little I was making. Um, and I because my parents so truly were not concerned, that just like reassured me. Yeah. I, yeah, they just, there was not like That's a. That's so interesting. Yeah, because when I, I find that for me, even like moving to New York, when I see, it's like when you're a kid, they say that if you, if a child gets hurt or something and then the parent freaks out, it's going to make the kid yes, scared. So true. And that's the case for me. If my, if I see my mom tense up or I see her scared, then it's like seeing your own blood. It makes you mm -hmm. scared. So their groundedness sounds like it helped you. It definitely did. And I, Jordan is also very, very calm and just very laxed for the most part. Like he, it's funny because I think that we're actually like switching roles I'm trying to become a lot more lax and he's turning into like how I was as a lunatic <laughs> and being like we have to get this this and this and I'm like I'm tired <laughs> like let's just chill um so I think having everyone believing in me and no one else being concerned gave me a sense of ease and I also had that six months okay for six months it's gonna get hard like I mentally prepared myself for that um but I didn't have I don't. I just didn't have a doubt after a while. Yeah, I still almost doubt myself like now more because I'm planning for next year, and I was like, when's it gonna collapse? When's this over? Like, what happens next? But that's what I'm trying to tell myself: live in the moment, just enjoy it. Like, yeah. don't worry about next year. We'll worry about next year, next year. What was also the transition going from the structure of the full time job? and the you know working from an office to working for yourself and and working from home what was that like liberating i basically went from being a shadow to the ceo of that company yeah. like following him around like people in the office used to joke because like my flip-flops would be or like shoes would just be flapping around the floor all like chasing him and then i when i worked in the city i worked remotely because the office wasn't here mm -hmm. so that was like a really good like middle step i guess to get me to like where i am today but it's, I always joke, I would never go back into an office. Like, I would feel yeah. horrible. And I visited my friend in her office this morning because she um, works right by the class and I wanted to bring her a treat. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you're so lucky. You just, like, don't even have to go into an office. And I used to take that so offensively because it's, like, people think I'm not doing anything all day. Yeah. And I'm like, but I'm like, no, like, she's right. Like, I can take a conference call from the street and that's where I do almost all my calls is yeah. when I'm walking on the sidewalk. Yeah. Um, 
I just love the flexibility I love that and too. yeah, I just, I can't sit still all day. Yeah. It drives me crazy. Especially on calls. Like I curl my hair on calls. Yes. I'll like do my makeup on. I, I can't like, which goes back to why I like this because I can't do those things, but it's so true. It does feel very productive to multitask. It does. On a conference call that, like, I don't really need dishes. to be. Yeah. <laughs> I do all of the things. Put yeah. yourself on mute if I have to pee. I mean... Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm not even going to tell you how many times I'm peeing on the phone. <laughs> okay. With the with that whole period of transition and building the brand and your business that you have now, looking back from you know when you started till now, what would you tell someone making a transition from a full-time job to working for themselves? Even that, you seem like you're so organized. You were mm-hmm. the, a lot of even the terms that you're using of you know forecasting and things that maybe you gained from working for another company and brand that yeah. you were able to like apply to your own business. How would you give someone advice and organizationally and mentally and even physically and for self care? Like, what are some what would you tell yourself, you know, before those six months and even up to now? So if someone's going to start working either from home or for themselves. Yeah, after, for, office, after yeah. working for someone else, that going, making that transition. Keeping a sense of structure. So like I said, setting an alarm every day mm-hmm. to get up. Um, I make an effort to leave the apartment every single morning. Like I, I have, I'm too routine, but like I wake up. <laughs> I can literally tell you what I do every day. I, love I wake it. up, brush my teeth. This is one um, of my questions my I always ask people on the podcast in yeah. the morning routine, so we can just do uh, it now. <laughs> wake up, brush my teeth. I have breakfast immediately. I have to eat within 20 to 30 minutes of waking up. It just works for me. Uh, make whatever it is that I'm having for breakfast. I is go that to the- a consistent thing, or do you change up with that? It, mm, it used to be really consistent. Now I really try and switch things up because... Otherwise, I just, like, I put so much cauliflower in my smoothies that it's to the point where I can't eat cauliflower anymore. Mm. Like, it destroys my stomach. Yeah. So, and at knock on wood, I don't have, like, stomach pains usually. Yeah. I'm pretty good with food. I'll have to tell you a story about a similar thing I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, it depends on if I'm going for a workout, like, anything, but... I, if it's a quick and easy breakfast, it's like some type of a yogurt. Um, right now, I love like Coconut Coal and Kite Hill. The new Greek style yogurt is so Ooh, good from Kite Hill. Um, like they're not sponsoring my not life. Sponsored, I would, but feel I mean, free. <laughs> <to the laughs> call podcast. me if you want. Um, <laughs> Open to it. <laughs> and granola. I like love granola and some type of like fruit, like berries or something. Or it'd be like banana bread or a muffin with some yogurt. Like I try and pair it so that it's like filled with fats and protein. Um, I used to be like a constant snacker in the morning. Like I used to have like breakfast and then a snack and then a snack and then lunch and that was like unnecessary. So now I try and have it so it's big enough to hold me over till lunch basically. Um, yeah, ultimately it holds me over basically every day. So I'll stay full from around 8.30 till about 12.31, which is for me pretty good. Um, and then I leave. I like book it out of here. Um, I don't leave the apartment until I go to the bathroom like yeah. I will not leave and I will not do anything until I go use the restroom too. Um, and I to do that too. I was late for my fitness class this morning, but I was like, it's fine. I don't care. I, I will miss a class. I won't work out unless I go to the bathroom. I love that. Yeah. Oh, no, I, this, is, this is great. This I podcast feel like is a called Let It Out. It's so. true. No, no, no. I'm like anal about going to the bathroom too. Oh, and I love this. My friends that I travel with them, like my in- Instagram friends, which are now really just considered my friends, yeah. they all laugh at me because I'm like the only one who has a regular cycle when we travel. Like, even when it's a time That's change, amazing. when we were in La Jolla in August, I would wake up in the morning, and even though it would be, like, 11 a.m., like, that time, like, I'd still go around 8, 8.30 then, like, just, it's, like, my body's very Do you habitual. drink, drinking a bunch of water, do you take a probiotic? Because I find that, like, gets it going for me. Mm, so, I do drink a lot of water. I drink a yeah. lot of, I have, like, four cups around mm-hmm. my apartment right now. Um, I drink a lot of beverages. I do I'm really bad with probiotics. Like, I do take them. I take, like, the Guard of Life one, so they're, like, yeah. the 50 billion. I have the same one. Do you one. see them on yeah. my face? I notice it because I have the same one. I leave the them out, one, so that way I remember. Yeah. And I was actually been taking the men's ones because I ran out of the women's ones, which oh, I true. called them to make sure I wouldn't grow a penis. They told me I'd be fine. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I take those exclusive. I definitely don't think that like, those make me go to the bathroom. They make my mom go to the bathroom, though, mm. which she'll kill and me I for saying me that. Too. But yeah, they do help a lot of people. Coconut cold, actually, I've heard too. The yogurt helps people go to the bathroom. Mm. Um, so yeah, I always do that. Then I go for either a workout class and then, or I go for a walk. 
because I need to get some type of a movement in because yeah. if I am in this confined space all day, I have to like stretch my legs. Same way. Clears my head. Like, and I find something. I might not leave if I don't early yes. on. Yes. Yeah. And like I need to like put up even if it's a sports bra, like I never actually wear like a regular bra. I'm not even wearing one right now. Like I just need to like put clothes on that aren't pajamas. Yeah. And I have recipe That's clothes. Huge. So like I don't want to say recipe clothes all day. Yeah. And then I go to the grocery store if I'm doing recipes that day. Mm-hmm. And then from there, that's where the day is never the same. I would say after the workout class, that's when it's I never know what's gonna happen. Yeah. Um, and I try and work out probably like three to four days a week. That makes sense. So I forget what my original question was. I think, oh, so advice for transitioning from... Yes, so structure. Having a routine, Mm, leaving, like, do not go a day without leaving your apartment or home. Like, get out there. Even if it's just to grab a cup of coffee, engage with somebody in person, Yeah. take a conference call outside. That's why I like doing as many meetings in person other than calls if I can because it forces me to get out of the house. Yeah. Especially for you when you're in a new city, too. Yeah. Because you want to, like, meet people. Exactly. And, and like, I'm not meeting them at work. So. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it's definitely just having some type of a routine. Yeah. Another tip that I have, which I don't follow, which I'm trying to do, is Jordan works, like, a more standard hour job. Like, he gets home around, like, 7 every day. Mm-hmm. And, like, shutting off work when he gets mm-hmm. home, which I truly do not do. Like, he will listen to this and he will be like, you are a hypocrite. You don't do that. I was working till like 1030 last night. Like mm-hmm. I'm never doing that. But I want him, when he, he comes home that I shut my laptop and I'm done. Yeah. I haven't gotten to that place yet, but I'm going to soon because yeah. I'm determined to do it. But having it's that balance. It's in the balance, podcast by the time this comes yes. out. And if you have an, a second room in your home, make that your office if you yeah. can. Mine's a, like, it's my kitchen. I'm usually sitting at my dining room table like when I'm on my computer. But kind of having like a separate space if you can allow for yeah. it. Yeah. What about um, in the evening? I always ask about evening routines. Do you have? Do you guys usually have dinner together when he mm-hmm. comes home? Do you cook? Yeah. What are some of your evening routines to relax and shut down at the end of the day? We eat together every night. I always wait for him unless it's like really late or like he's at something. He won't be home until like nine thirty ten. He works in the city. not waiting. Yeah, his commute's actually shorter to our new apartment than it was to Battery Park from Midtown. So it's like, it's a really easy commute. What does he do? He's um, in accounting at a hedge fund. Okay. So his hours, he's usually home by like 7, 7.30. The the season, like the weeks vary and stuff. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, he walks in the door. I typically have dinner either heating up or making it or something. We eat dinner. I have dessert. I have dessert every single night. And then now we sit on our couch, which is so funny because our other couch was third of that like it was yeah literally and we would be sitting on top of each other watching tv that looks like a very cozy couch i would love to it's so (laughs) cozy i'm really excited about it that corner is like gold yeah i Um, feel like i would fall asleep there jord likes watching tv i haven't turned the television on since moving here (laughs) i don't really watch tv and i used to take a bath every night around six I hate my new bathtub. Mm, it's too mm, shallow, and mm. I'm just, like, cold, and then my boobs, like, are, like, Ooh, sticking yeah. out of the water, and I'm like, this is awkward. I don't want to sit here anymore. Yeah. So I don't, but I shower at night. Like, that's kind of my in-between, yeah. between work and having dinner. I'm a nighttime shower. I, me too. Really? I really like a really, really hot shower. Yeah. Like, lots of steam. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Um, And then... That's really it. I don't have a big nighttime routine. Yeah. I guess the last three nights, I've put oils in like a diffuser. Oh, yeah. It's supposed to help with stress, so that. they say. We'll see if it, yeah. if it does. I try and Gotta do that. Those cortisol levels. Oh, my God. <laughs> if anyone has any tips, call yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, tweet at us. Okay, I want to go back a little bit further to your childhood again. So you mentioned your dad took you to Whole Foods when you mm-hmm. kind of first got into this. So what was your relationship to food Growing up, how are your parents into wellnessy food? What did you eat growing up? Do you um, have brothers and sisters? I do. I have a younger brother. Okay. Most people think I'm an only child because I don't talk about him that much. Are you guys close? But yeah, we're very close. And we have like, the age difference. He's twenty. Going to be twenty four soon. Okay. So any single ladies, call me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> trying to find him someone. <laughs> he's the best. Though. He's so cute. Oh, um, I'm, this is the place to get him a date. There I know, right? Of, yeah. This is like, my mom was like, post him on your stories. I'm like, okay, mom, this is not The Bachelorette on my... Well, uh, podcast listeners, feel free. <laughs> <laughs> this is so like funny. Sleepless in Seattle. <laughs> I know, right? Imagine. Yeah. 
Um, some girl, some cute girl is driving her car right now, <laughs> just like daydreaming about your little brother. Stop, that would be so cute. We could be friends. <laughs> um, so I was a very, very bad eater in the fact where I would eat, eat like nothing besides chicken fingers and Wendy's and like a picky eater. Yes, like did not eat anything. Like po- I loved pop tarts with icing on them oh, and cheese Pop-Tarts doodles and could you could not. Do you have pop tarts recipe? It's coming. <gasps> It's good. <laughs> I love Pop Tarts. Oh, I like so good. I'm obsessed. so excited for that. Yay, me too. <laughs> and I just I didn't like real food. Like I didn't yeah. like chicken. I didn't like vegetables unless they were a French fry. And I was when I was younger, I was actually very chubby, which most people don't believe me. I will show you pictures. Like I have some on my phone for when people actually are like, No, I don't believe you. And I had a lot of like baby fat. <laughs> yeah. When I mean, when I was in San Diego, I was like texting my mom, like, no one believes me, I used to be chubby, send pics. So she sent me some. <laughs> And I just didn't, I didn't work out. I didn't move. I wasn't very, I'm not, still not athletic. Like I wasn't very coordinated. I had just, I think I, from, and I'm realizing this more and more as I'm getting older, I've had like a pretty rocky relationship with food since I was probably around like 10, 12, like at a young age, whether that was yeah. eating too much of bad food and like taking out, like being unhappy on eating too much. Like I didn't have a binge disorder, but I just didn't. Like, I would just eat because, like, I knew it was bad for me. Like, not because it was good. Then when I was in high school, I lost weight. This is when, like, Weight Watchers was really cool. So I did, like, a Weight Watchers type of mentality. Did that, like, look, then I was around, like, this size. Went to college. Gained freshman, like, 25. Like, gained, was, like, the girl that you graduated with that went to college and blew up. Basically, just from, like, smoking too much weed and going to Wawa for meatball subs every single night and peanut butter M&M's. And just wasn't happy yeah. after I put on that weight. And then my sophomore year, I pledged a sorority, which was, like, tough on your social life. So, like, all you do is eat because you're bored and, like, you can't drink. So, might as well eat something. And just, like, wasn't happy in my body still. And felt very just, like, I know that I wasn't – if someone saw me, they wouldn't have said that I was large. But I was large for, like, my frame. Like, I yeah. just didn't feel good. I had no energy. I was, like, blah. Then I lost a lot of weight, like, in a very, like, unhealthy way. I counted every calorie, like, Mm. cut out carb, just not fueling my body. I remember my grandmother telling me to, she was like, Rachel, you know, you have to eat bread or your hair will fall out. Like, Mm. I don't even know if that's true, but my hair did fall out, and it was like a strand of hay. I had, like, no hair because I just wasn't eating, like, really much besides, like, chewy granola bars and apples 12 almonds my parents still make jokes so that we would count my almonds and it was I mean I this is almost like a different topic but I'm a believer that everyone goes through something when it comes to an eating issue I don't think that I was anorexic I truly don't and I think that when I was going through that, it was either you're anorexic or you're bulimic or you're just you're just fine like don't worry about it I was actually living in Italy the place not to go through this FYI because there's so much good food I got out of the shower looked in the mirror just literally looked at myself was like shit what did I do like you kind of scared yourself yeah I was like Rach you look horrible and I mean I'm sure then you can relate like having yourself figure that out is life changing because ever since then that doesn't mean that it was smooth sailing from that like it was a huge struggle for me to mentally tell myself to eat more because you get in such a creature of habit like a routine of eating a certain way and it's scary and jarring to change yeah and and know like I know for me if I add a little bit more will I be able to stop or what will that do for me or will I if it will it be even more and more and I want it you know and how does your body stop gaining weight when does it know to stop it's like it'll find the happy place of fueling it where it feels happy um so I came home from Italy and I remember I emailed my parents and I was there being like, FYI, when you come, I don't look good. And they knew. I mean, I, this people had Facebook. Yeah. Um, and that was like the unfortunate thing is that because I went, when I was in college, when I first started, I was chubbier than I was in high school and then went all the way down to a low weight. So then when I even got to this weight, people would still make comments that I was like so skinny. But it's like, no, I'm just getting compared to like what you saw me as. Right. Like whatever. Right. But yeah. yeah, and I think that when I came home, that That's was a whole when, other topic of like people commenting on people's oh weight. Gosh. It's we could like, do a whole other podcast on. It's, it's, I'm so passionate about that. It's like yeah. so sad and just so scary for people to have yeah. to deal with that. Um, 
came home and my mom was just like, you know, eat, so eat whatever you want, like just gain weight, whatever you have to do. And that's when I was kind of like, no, I need to figure out what foods are going to make me feel good. And that's really when my like passion for what I'm doing now started. Like that was when I started to really pay attention to the foods I was putting in my body. I would go to the dining hall for dinner and I wouldn't just get like pepperoni pizza. I would get like at the time like baked falafel and like chicken pesto sandwiches and like yeah. really making an effort to, if I was going to gain weight, to do it the right way. Yeah. And I mean, my parents are always ate like healthy, but that was also when healthy was just eating brown rice and chicken, not paying attention to where anything's coming calories. from. Yeah, yeah, like they ate healthy. Like, I mean, now they eat very similar to how I do. So it's an yeah. amazing, it's an easy relationship like that. When I go to my parents, I don't have to bring any food. They have everything I need. That's great. And so, yeah, ever since then, it's been uphill. And each day I become more and more comfortable and like happy with my body yeah. and my relationship with food. And I've learned not to let other people like make comments like affect me if I used to be called like Rachel food or like oh Rachel won't eat that and it's like no Rachel will decide if she, like I'll let you know yeah. if I don't want to eat that or oh if I'm my not gosh to. that is presently such a big thing with me of yeah. like oh Katie won't eat that and I'm like hi I'm all right here and I'll and, and I get it because especially with my family they've seen me go from here to here to here and and that's a lot and I'm constantly yeah changing but I think now that you know I'm eating intuitively and and I, I want to pick up on something you said there about and there's and a lot of the work that we talk about the podcast and and through my own experience talking about eating, eating disorders is what you said about you know unless you're super super underweight or you're super overweight people don't yeah talk about the fact that most human beings especially women have issues with food and increasingly not just women more, more people but mm -hmm. I believe that eating disorders exist on a spectrum and you know depending on the day I'm still somewhere on that spectrum you know yes. and I'll still be like checking myself of like oh what did, what did I do there and, and checking that mentality and not returning to old behaviors and and really trying to stay in check with the way that I know feels best and I know I'm also finding physical pleasure in food mm -hmm. but I'm also feeling good in my body and finding that balance that isn't a balance every single day some days are more in one direction and some days are more in the other and figuring that out and it sounds like you naturally did that and and then it what's really interesting and what I talk about a lot on the podcast and with a lot of my friends that I've met kind of in our community and mm -hmm. is that it's funny how for better for worse and in your case definitely for better how our whole trajectory of our careers was impacted and changed by our relationship with food. There yes. are so many health coaches and trainers and nutritionists and people, uh, bloggers who had completely different interests and study. That was me, you know, like I studied broadcast journalism. Like I mm -hmm. didn't know I would do anything in, in wellness, but then just because I happened to have an eating disorder at the end of college, I got into this world that I never knew anything about. So it's funny how that can did you ever yeah. make that connection? Absolutely. I, it's, I've actually noticed that in a lot of different aspects of my life, taking really rough and like tough times you're going through and how they've led me to be successful or more positive in another way, if that makes sense. Like I was yeah. fired. Okay. I was able to grow my own brand and business because I was fired and because I dealt with food issues, I learned to love my body. I learned how to feed mm -hmm. my body. And there's all these like little stories along the way, but I think that because of all that, like that's led me to self more self love, which is something that I've been looking for since I was a young girl. Like I just didn't love myself. Like yeah. I was never the type of person who looked in the mirror and was like, "You look real good today." Like I never yeah. thought that. I was always self conscious. I never felt pretty. I never felt like good looking. And mm -hmm. I mean, not to say that I look in the mirror now and I give myself a thumbs up. I look in the mirror and I'm like, I'm very comfortable. I'm just yeah. happy. And I don't need to look in the mirror and think I look like Barbie. I just need to look in the mirror and think I look like Rachel and think that I look like comfortable. And that's yeah. all I could ask for, which yeah. I think has grown. It's scary to think that it's been, I'm 27. So it's been about seven years. Seven years ago is when I was in Italy. It's taken me seven years to get to like, well, probably I was like 25, 26 when it was like good. It's like five to six years yeah. to get to a place where I was like, wow, <sighs> like yeah. breathe. Yeah. So it's crazy. It's interesting that you were in Italy when that started to happen because I studied abroad in Spain in college and kind of had 
when, when we get to coffee, I'll tell you the yeah. whole thing. But basically, similar thing. Gained weight at the beginning of college. Ended up going away to study abroad and lost a lot of weight. Wow. And came back and had a lot of people, had a lot of comments. And, and I was kind of, it switched something in me that was like, oh, this is in my control. And I think when I was there, so much wasn't in my control. So I clung yeah. to what was, which was my body and my food. And then I just kind of let that spiral. And I was like, well, if I can control it this much, how I can just keep going. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a slippery slope for people of yes. getting started on that. And there's there's often like a weird, I don't know if you remember this, like when I was a kid, I would go away for the summer and I had this like, grand illusion that I would come back and I would like look completely different mm-hmm. every year like I just my, yeah, I don't my know clothes why would, I don't know why but it was the same sort of thing yeah I blame like, television because they yeah. would be like oh wow she came back from summer looking fresh exactly <laughs> the media totally effed this up in, in yes. so much of this especially I as women I was literally just writing that this morning yeah yeah I mean the fact that we only see one body shape primarily in the media is like really damaging especially when we grew up and mm-hmm. we have all the same media touch points I'm sure yeah and anyway so it's just it's an interesting I don't even remember exactly where I was going with that but it's an interesting experience you know seeing that change and then it's interesting for the people in our lives watching that you know and and seeing that and and I see it in other people because I recognize it because I've been through it myself and like you said I think it's just something that we all go through and that's why these conversations of like us actually talking about this and you know that's why I'm so happy to have you on the podcast because I know so many girls who listen and so many people who follow you don't know the the full story or don't know exactly like it's good to hear your voice and hear you talking about all this well people always ask me like how do you have so much willpower you are surrounded by food all day Mm -hmm. I don't think of food as something that that I need willpower over like, I have the power over it. The food doesn't have the power over me. Yeah. If I make, on average, six to eight desserts a week, I can't sit there and eat the entire thing. Like, nobody can do that. Yeah. It's not, that's not how it works. Like, for yesterday, I made, um, like, a new no-bake cookie, and the day before that, I made this epic thing I can't wait to give you. Oh, and, so like, I had a slice of it, and I was done. It's fine. It's there. It's allowed. Exactly. And like that was a huge reason why I even started my recipes was because I wanted to have dessert and I want to be able to have dessert every day and feel good about it. Because yes, I don't, I don't recommend at least for myself to eat refined sugar and real flowers every single day after dinner. That's not going to make me feel good. I'm not going to feel good if I eat like a massive thing, Duncan Hines chocolate cake. If I eat like a Simple Mills cupcake with a drizzle on it or something or like that's fine and it works for me and so finally finding a way that I could have my cake and eat it too has been epic but it's also given me a perspective where I don't need to like shut out food groups and be afraid of them yes like all foods are equal just listen to what your body wants you to eat yes preach I love all of that something I we've already addressed body image quite a bit but Mm -hmm. talking about this I I usually bring this up on the podcast and the way I frame this question is when you are having a bad body image moment if you ever still have them you know what do you do to shift out of that so it doesn't become a bad body image day or week how do you mentally or physically what are some things that you do um if I feel like I'm feeling like large or something like if I'm like oh my god I just feel so large like I always say after it because Jordan will just be like shut up like you're not large I'm like I know that I'm not large but I just feel so large right now like why do I feel this way instead of because I ate something that like did not resonate well with me but I just like move on like I don't have very bad like bad body days for that yeah long like I was just in Portland and I still get like anxiety eating out for like two meals a day for like four to five days like that's a lot and I lo- I think also because I love having control in the kitchen and knowing what's going into my food and how I'm doing that. And yeah. I actually just felt bloated when I was there. Like I had to unbutton my pants at one point. And I didn't get upset about it. But the next day I woke up and like my pants bed, they were fine. Like I was just probably bloated from too much salt, you right. know, or like something. And or you will knows, go back like to normal. The plane, the f- 
stress. Yeah, exactly. Like so and I think because I was, I've been so many weights, and I finally am happy that like I think about each end of the spectrum, and I don't want to go there again because yeah. when I was heavier, I mentally was not okay. Yeah. I was mentally eating everything in sight because I just felt unhappy. When I was very underweight. I was so afraid to eat and like my body and I didn't look good or feel good at either place. So it's like, I'm finally here. Enjoy where I am. It's great. Do you think your relationship, it sounds like you have such a great relationship with your husband. Do you think that that has helped you with your body image issues over the years? Mm, I, it's funny, or funny, but I, so Jordan and I started dating March of 2010, 2010, yes. And my downhill spiral started February 2010. So I was already a month or two into like counting and Mm. restricting when I met Jordan. So when we started dating, to him, from his perspective, like a guy's perspective, like that's just how she eats. Mm. It's fine. And Jordan's never made me feel I wasn't pretty enough or beautiful enough or anything. He is... I'm not even just saying this because he's my husband. Like, Jordan is the nicest person. You'll, I hope that you'll probably meet him before you leave, but cool. he's the nicest person that anyone will ever meet. Like, he just wouldn't hurt a fly. He keeps me so grounded and, like, calm in a lot of ways. And he just – this was such a Rachel relationship. Like, it was such a relationship with myself that I had to deal with. He was supportive in any way that he could be, but it was, like, so much larger than him. Yeah. It's almost like how you – I personally don't think that you could be in a relationship that's successful until you really can be in a relationship with yourself. And I make myself a priority. Like, my marriage to my – Jordan and both my marriage to myself are very, very important to me. And when I'm, like, traveling or I'm, when I went to Portland or I've been – like, this year I've traveled a lot without Jordan. And every time I go away, I love my mother-in-law dearly, but she's like, is George going? And I'm like, no, Rachel's going by herself with her friends because that is just what I need. My mom's very independent. Yeah. I'm going to Florida. My parents just ha- got a place in Florida and my mom's going to be there for the whole winter. I'm going to go for a month and just stay there. And it's amazing. Everyone, you're, you're going to leave Jordan? Is he going to be okay? I'm like, he's going to be fine. I'm going to go. I'll see him in three weeks. It's like... I just, I'm such a believer in having that relationship with yourself. And I think that makes your marriage or relationship or whatever even more important because you need to be able to be with yourself, to be with somebody else. And if I lose myself for a relationship, I would, I wouldn't be happy with myself. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm in, my boyfriend still lives in Michigan. So we're going to ask, you said roommate and then you said boyfriend and I'm like, and I heard you talk about your boyfriend on Jordy's podcast. So I was so confused. Yeah. So, so he I, lives in Michigan. Yeah. And it, it's, yeah, sometimes it's hard because I just genuinely, he's really great to hang out with. And yeah. I love hanging out with him because it's really fun. But for the most part, I'm great here. I love being in New York. I love meeting people. And like tonight I have a thing I have to go to and then a dinner. And I'm like constantly running around the city mm-hmm. and I'm busy and it's great. And I think it's really important to be independent and, yes. and maybe you know, generationally with your mother-in-law, it was a different time or people just, other people don't understand. And so I think I'm not, I'm better for my relationship when I'm happy with what I'm doing for myself. Yes, exactly. And I think because my dad traveled a lot when I was growing up just for like what he had to do for work and it was always my mom and my brother and I. So I'm just, I'm just used to that like female independence and yeah, sometimes I can't get a jar open without Jordan here. Like, sometimes I need that for, like, the little things. But I want to be okay and feel safe in my home going to bed by myself. Yeah, I want to be able to do things, drive in the dark by my... Like, I want to be by myself and be okay yeah. because I don't want to be, like, a grandma at the age of 27. Like, I want to mentally yes. be young as long as I can. Oh, my gosh. Yes, I, like, agree with all of that yeah. and love that. My parents were divorced, so same thing. I was Your always with my super mom. super independent then. Yeah. And this is another thing I always ask on the podcast at the end, but it, this seems like a good spot to bring it in. So we talk about feminism and how do you define your feminism and how do you act your feminism in your life? Hmm. I think, I don't even know if this is going to be an answer yet, but I think that working for myself and being like a female entrepreneur okay. is how I, I don't know how I feel about the term girl boss. I'm still very indifferent about it. 
first I loved it. Then I was kind of like, I don't like that the term boss is for men only, if that makes sense. Yeah. And like, that's kind of silly. And I don't like Person that. boss. What? Exactly. Yeah. Just be a boss. And it doesn't matter if you have a penis or a vagina. Just be a yeah. boss. Like, I don't care. Yeah. Or if you have neither, that's fine too. Yeah. I just. Or I, both. Exactly. Whatever. <laughs> like, I think that I believe that females can be just as empowering and make an impact as men just like men I don't think that they have the same confidence to do so and I'm grateful that I've had that confidence and had that push from like the biggest male figure in my life my dad who believed in me to do that yeah. um I always joke that I'm like a son more than a daughter <laughs> and I am girly in the sense where I like how I dress is girly and everything like I get manicures every week but when it comes to my train of thinking I do have a very I guess male skewed perspective like I make perverted jokes I like to do all the like finance type stuff like I like to track everything I don't know I just feel that I don't love the term feminism and I don't, what is the male term for feminism like malinism mm, yeah like, I, mean, I, I think of like misogynistic men that's okay. when I think of like anti feminine but I think men are feminine I think good men are also feminists yeah, I just you know? kind of believe it in, sounds like, like your dad is and like the people in, yeah. in your life are. It's just supporting women because I think for so long we've been not supported by men typically. Exactly. Like I hate you know, the segregation. Yeah. That's what's just like, I guess because we're also growing up in a different generation where it's a lot more common for there to be a working mom and a stay-at-home dad or like both yeah. parents are working and then there's like a nanny or like anything and I mean, I want, do you watch This Is Us, how there's, like, a Manny on there? Like, I yeah. think that's the funniest thing ever. I'm like, I want a Manny, and I want it to be hot and look like him, too. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. Did I even answer the question? No, you did. And okay. I think he, the way you act, your feminism is every day. Oh, yeah. Well, how do I act? Business. I think just, like, working, being a, a woman working. I never call myself a woman. I call myself a girl. Being a woman that works for herself, I think, is, like, yeah. scary and unheard of when it kind of a few decades ago so I'm like grateful to be here and talking to you know negotiating for yourself speaking up for oh yourself. my god yeah. I think that's something that's really important and being taken seriously and I'm sure you've had experiences yeah. that have been great and experiences where maybe you haven't felt like you've been taken seriously and that right there I think is feminism I mean I negotiate everything myself I still thrive I thrive off of negotiating that's I don't amazing. know why I'm like annoying if you ever need me to negotiate for um you, well, yeah because partnerships for the sponsorships for this podcast i still am like i'll say a number oh. and they'll be like oh yeah that that's totally fine then i'm like oh man i should have got should have gone higher yeah so. but i got two new campaign things yesterday and the day before and they came back at my rates and said okay that's how i knew that my rates are too low if they're just saying mm. okay like they should be higher i feel like i should be taking notes right now yeah i'll, I'll help you i love doing this really? i help a lot of yeah, there are bloggers in the space oh with gosh. their rates. Because if anything, we need to all work together yes. because if there's people, and I need to talk to my friends that post for free because brands won't pay me help. because yes. they're posting for free. I'm like, yo, bitch, like, I'm trying to make yes. a living. Like, stop posting for free. Yes. What are your okay. some of your greatest lessons and tips about Instagram in particular? Instagram. I feel like I knew you so well and then you changed so much. Yeah, talk, so talk much. about that. How do you like? How do you handle your feelings about? I went on a tangent like last week or the week before. Like I have a very positive on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, my stories. I have a very positive Instagram feed. Like I, if I have a product yeah. I don't like, you'll never hear about it. You'll never see it. I just won't talk about the product. Like I yeah. everything. And it's not because I want everything to be portrayed as perfect. It's just I don't want people to go on my feed and be like, oh, she's complaining again. Like, I'm not going to be complaining about the weather. I'm not complaining about, like, about an election. I'm just not going to be doing that because that's, that's so funny. The, my line on my Instagram is I post about what I love, not about what I don't. It's from my favorite movie. Like, this. have you seen Liberal Arts? No. Anyway. Should I see it? Yeah. It's, it's on Netflix? Yeah, it's on Netflix. Josh Liberal Rager, Arts? Elizabeth. With Olson, yeah, I Josh Rader did my podcast, and it's one of my favorite movies. Okay, I'm and they on talk it. about they talk about that, and so I think it's such oh, a I funny love that. line because it's not it's not people think it's cool to talk about what they don't like and like be negative, yeah. but it's actually boring. It's really boring, <laughs> and I want things to be happy. Yeah, but so, it's, except this one time. So sorry, I interrupted you, but so I just I, love that. Lately, like a year ago, or even more than a year ago, the engagement on Instagram was just so different. Like when. 
I would post a picture. I was getting yes, a lot more me too. likes and comments. Yeah. And I, the last, I would say since May or June, I've been like really hard on myself about it and just can't, can't understand why I'm not getting the same engagement as I used to get with a smaller was following. Was this they changed the... Yeah, um, this is like before the algorithm changed. When it isn't chronological? Okay. Yeah, and I didn't even like think it was going to be that impactful but like it did and I think also just the discover page changed Mm. so it just I don't get Instagram anymore I really don't I used to have a really good handle on it when I would say and I still believe this but like consistency and quality content and engagement those three things will help you grow a brand I do not think that it is as feasible to grow an Instagram account today as it was a year and a half ago I mean I also was on my phone 24 7 like always on there and like now I haven't been on my phone like like I leave my phone in places during the day because sometimes I can't get anything done yeah and I don't want to go on Instagram I post a photo now and I turn it over because I don't even want to see it and I don't yeah. log on for two hours after because I'm like then I'll know at the two hour mark like how it's doing that's it yeah. but I went on Instagram and on one of my stories and said that I don't know what's going on it's bothering me that I'm not getting the same like likes and comments that I did and I just need to remind myself that I'm not an Instagram likes generator and I'm not, I don't pitch myself as an Instagrammer. That's not my job title. Yeah. I'm not a professional Instagrammer. I'm a recipe developer and food stylist with a blog. That is what I do. That is my bread and butter. I feel, I feel like a key part of growing my brand has been con- the consistency aspect and having the discipline to post every day, create new content, have a similar look and feel that has been so key. And a lot of people in the space are trying to like transition into doing more like lifestyle things instead of food all the time and like veer off from the path of what they built their following around. This is like very recent. As of a, like a couple weeks ago, I'm like taking a step back and I'm like, no, I'm here for food. People associate my name with food. Why am I trying to do lifestyle stuff when people want more cookies? That's what they're looking for. That's what they came to me for. Like um, me posting a picture in my workout gear every day is not going to see engagement anyways, but just sticking to like my bread and butter or I guess in my, my like sticking to like my banana bread and almond butter is my bread and butter. Mm -hmm. Making, making sure that I like realize that has been important too. But don't you feel like, like to me, I, I like never cook. I love, like, I love, like, looking at recipes, oh, but I just, like, cook. I never cook. It's so easy. <laughs> okay, well, I should. All my recipes are easy. Okay, well, I need to start making recipes. But yeah. I still follow you because I like your, I just like seeing the recipes. I'm like, well, one day I'll make that, yeah. you know? And it's, it's like, you aspirational save it for later. cooking. Yeah. Yeah. And, but I would love, I just like you as a brand. I like your voice. I think what really got me following you is because Mm -hmm. I know you live in New York and I was moving to New York and I liked seeing the places you were at and it helped me like, I started, like I got my first juice freeze because you recommended it. Heck yeah. Yeah. And I got it for a dollar. Yeah. That was a good, thousands Um, of people went in those like four That was amazing. I know. Yeah. I wish they paid me for that. I wish I made money off of that. Yeah. Yeah. No, you should have. That was insanity. Yeah. I made money off of that. Literally. (laughs) It's crazy. Like, oh my gosh. That was very helpful. Um, Not sponsored, but again, open to it. Yeah. Seriously. Um, Anyway, but I feel like people just want more you. Do you ever feel like you want to put more of yourself into? Because I would like to see more photos of you and you and like doing other things I do them every once in a while like this week I did one that was like all about my like how I built a fitness routine and journey and all that and then a few days beforehand I posted like me in Portland holding my favorite like rx bar um but the posts like a I get stressed out about those I don't like putting my face on there all the time because it's just not going to be an everyday occurrence I like doing them once in a while it's almost like a quality over quantity with those like the post about my fitness journey did extremely well. I think, and I think it's because I'm not just constantly posting selfies all the time. Yeah. So that when they, when my readers know that they're seeing my face, it's because I'm sharing something that yeah. like is in food and I want them to see it. But I want, like, I still want to be known for my food, but as like, I want to be a human behind it. Like there's a yeah. lot of food blogs that don't show the human interaction behind it. And I try and do that as much as I can. I've slowed down on Instagram stories a lot. I try not to post more than a couple, well, no, like a few, 
each day because I was losing a lot of followers from Instagram mm. stories. I'm convinced from Instagram stories. My gro- like growth in general for most people on Instagram right now has plateaued. Like people aren't growing as rapidly as they used to because of yeah. the different changes for the algorithm. And I think that people get really sick of seeing stories all the time and they just like unfollow you. Mm. And I don't want to post a million stories and like make people feel bad about themselves because yeah. – that is how I feel when I'm watching my favorite fashion bloggers or my favorite fitness bloggers. Like, I'm looking at their stories and I'm feeling bad about myself. Yeah. So I can't even imagine how somebody feels when they see me posting food all the time and they're like, I'm so hungry. Or like, I can't make that. Like, I don't want to saturate and overwhelm people yeah. by doing that. So I try and find a balance. That's like, so thoughtful. And I've thanks. been thinking about that a lot lately too because I'm not – and I don't think of myself as an influ- Instagram influencer or anything like that. I just, like, have an Instagram and, like, okay. post about it with my life. But I've been thinking a lot with stories because I love stories. Like, I love yeah. doing them and sharing. I, I look at it as, like, my gratitude journal for the day. At the end of the day, I'll be like, oh, that was a really nice moment. Or, like, that was really fun. Oh, that's a nice that way to funny. look at it. But recently I've been like, okay, that's how I rationalized it to myself. I'm not in the in the moment during this really fun thing I'm doing. I'm yeah. on my phone, but it's okay because it gets to last longer and my mom gets to see it and I get to think about oh it later. Oh my gosh, your mom. My mom, when I was in Arizona, and where was I last time? She would text Jordan and be like, is Rachel okay? She's not posting stories. Oh my God, my mom like, does mom, the mom, same thing. I know, my mom does the same thing. She's like... She calls me 80 times if she, like, doesn't see me posting on my story because yeah. I, it's the same, it's kind of the same with the food thing. Like, I know I used to be into that, but I'm doing the, like, in the moment thing. Yeah. So now I think of Instagram stories as, and I want to know what you think of this, as, like, moments when I'm genuinely bored by myself and I, like, see something funny or, like, I want to, like, make fun of something I see in the street or yeah. something where... I'm not doing anything else and those are the moments that I want to post and those little interactions that I want to remember later or share with someone else or like this is crazy that I'm seeing this on the street in New York City I need to share with someone else that's fine because that doesn't take me out of the moment it kind of like enhances the moment but then I was got in my head about like well if my stories are all these little like stupid things and the day I'm actually doing something somewhat cool I'm not posting yeah then I felt like this weird thing and it's like who cares it's all too much exactly and I just was like Maybe it's not going to be an exact science. Like, most of the time I'm not going to post if I'm doing something. Like, this weekend my boyfriend came to visit, and I really wasn't on my phone much at all. And the last time he was here visiting, we had so much fun, and I was constantly listening about it. And my mom was like, oh, my God. She's, like, the biggest fan of my stories. Yeah. She loved seeing that. And this time she was like, did you guys have fun? I didn't see anything. And I was like, no, it was amazing. You're not having any fun. I know. Yeah. So it's just, I don't know. It's, I it's think an it's, interesting thing. You have to find the balance of what works for you and, like, your brand and what you want to put out there. I have lately just been taking pictures and then uploading them to my stories later. Yes, so like, that's what I do, too. That's been yeah, pretty that's clutch I because I want to make the story look pretty. I don't want to just, like, exactly. the story. I do, don't do many videos. I think I'm trying to keep my stories more, like, where I'm working out because – People, if I feel like if I'm not working out there, then people will be like, why aren't you going there anymore? And then they want to know or what I'm snacking on or what recipe I'm creating and showing more like behind the scenes stuff. But I, when I'm traveling especially, I just like take a lot of things and then upload them all at once. Yeah. And I'm doing, I do a lot of Instagram story takeovers for brands. I'm doing one tomorrow. Do I do it all live or do I do it and then upload it? And like, I think I'll just do it live for the brand because it's like more fun for them. But it's like hard because it's also just like pressure on yeah. you because like they clearly think that you have this exciting life and I'm like you're coming to the class with me tomorrow and then we're gonna have breakfast <laughs> and yeah. like what are we doing yeah I it, it's an interesting thing I really like taking a photo of something in the moment really quick having it on my phone and then yeah when I'm in an uber when I'm in a cab or when I'm waiting for the subway I can scroll through what do I exactly. want to post right now this is fine but when I'm actually in the moment, I can just be there, take a photo of it, put it away. Mm-hmm. That's because the second the you open that app, yeah. there's something that's going to distract you. And for me, it's either a DM or like a post totally. I see, and then I'm like, oh, I wonder what they're doing. And then yeah. I'm not on it. So if I just stay off of Instagram, I'm just yes. like better. Yes. And I like what you said too. My favorite part of stories is the funny part of drawing things on it and making it silly. Exactly. And I like to the just creativity. sit there and do that on my own. Yeah. I, I'm I love with you. That. Okay, there. I have my copious notes on you, so I want to make sure I like hit all of the virtual notes before we get to the questions I ask everyone. But I think we're really close. Okay, so I feel like we 
docked the bow about Instagram and social media. Anything else you want to say about maintaining your relationship with social media and where you are with that? I would say we're not as in a we're not in an extremely committed relationship like we once were. I've definitely taken a breather. Not monogamous. Yeah. We're like, <laughs> I'm trying to see other people. <laughs> For sure. Um, basically, just right now, I'm trying to figure out how to not put all my eggs in that basket. Yeah. Because I think that I love Instagram for what it's done for my brand. And I think that, I mean, it's an amazing app. Like, I visually love it as a consumer and, like, yeah. as a user. But I think that for a lot of blogs and people who post and have a following on Instagram, it's a customer service platform, and I cannot respond to everybody. Like, mm-hmm. I always have 99-plus request messages. Do not, I don't open them because once you open them, it's a constant stream of communication, and then I'll say something that's wrong, and then, like, they're going to hate me, and I also just don't have the time to sit there and... That's a full-time job. I get over 100 new DMs a day. Like, over... I, to the point where if I click on the DM today of 99-plus, and I see the, like, names... If I go tomorrow, whole new list of names. Like, wow. it's it's just constant. And I'm the type of person who's like, go big or like, go home. Like, I'm either committed or I'm like, not doing it. And I can't commit to it. Like, I would yeah. need to hire an assistant to answer those. And I don't want to hire somebody right now. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I reply to every comment on a photo. So, yeah. if someone really has a question, just comment on my photo and yeah. I will get back to you. That is so easy for me. It's much simpler. And so, I always do it that way. But DMs, like, kill me. Yeah, and that's a, a, a newer feature. Can you turn that off as a... It, it, mine's turned off, so if you're on my stories, you can't DM me, oh. but you can still go, you can go to anyone's profile and DM oh, them. Okay. Have you ever tried, especially being such a huge influencer on Instagram, in that, like, talking about it on your story, like you mentioned earlier, have they reached out to you, or have you ever reached out to them Instagram? about asking some of these questions? Yeah, about the algorithm. And... I mean, no. It's funny, because I don't consider myself, like, a huge influencer on Instagram I think that to Instagram I'm just like another person trying to make money off of their platform yeah like I'm not verified like the check mark I tried and they told me they're not accepting any more verification is that how do you do that is that something that they Instagram has to do it yeah so I like tried going through an agency to then do it and then they wouldn't do it I'm like okay well then that's also I'm like why do I care so much about Instagram like yeah. there's so much more than out there I need to just use Instagram to bring my food to more people's mouths but like I need to have other outlets like I don't think Instagram is going anywhere I just think that it's time to have something else to pair with it yeah well said okay now we're gonna do these kind of quick fire okay I usually Um, love these I'll warn you they start off easier and they get a little bit deeper in our face so I warm you up a little bit okay okay favorite color black favorite day (laughs) of the week Friday Favorite hour of the day? Mm. Seven. Favorite PM. favorite fruit? Oh, apples. Favorite vegetable? Wait, what kind of that? Honey crisp. Okay. Favorite vegetable. Um, I want to say zucchini, but I know that's not technically a vegetable. Oh really? It's a fruit? Yeah, that is it right? Seeds? I don't know, I'm so bad at that. I'm saying stuff. zucchini and people judge me then Brussels sprouts. Okay. <laughs> Um, best thing you've eaten in the last week? The recipe I'm going to give you oh in a God, few I'm minutes. So I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, I I've never felt more like cozy and loved like walking into your apartment. I get to try your food. I oh get my to God. have this like beautiful conversation Thank you. With you. No, you can't. Okay, what a good day. Mm-hmm. Um, it combines like, it combines cake, cookies, and like pie. Oh my God. And one, but it's like, it's literally the same ingredients as I was using like banana bread. So it's like not that indulgent. Yeah. Amazing. Um, do you have a favorite recipe you've ever created? I think my favorite is still my paleo chocolate chip banana bread, which is like nut free as well. And it was my first really successful recipe that like went viral and it was just crazy and people make it every single day and tag me in it and it just warms my heart and soul that people make that recipe so because it's Mm -hmm. probably a year and a half old and it's my favorite. We make it all the time. Do you have like a fudge recipe? I have like a pistachio, a pistachio fudge. fudge. I think I made that, like, when I first... <laughs> like, is that kind of old? 
It's like six months old. Or maybe, do you have one that you, it's something that I you put like in cups. the freezer. Oh yeah, I got a lot of freezer stuff. It's still, I made one of those. That was maybe like right like when cups, I found Maybe like cups, like some type of chocolate yes, cup. Yes, peanut butter, chocolate. Yeah, yes. I have a lot of I stuff I made like one that. of those and so I love them. So easy, yeah. so easy. So easy. Um, that was when I had a much bigger kitchen when I lived in Michigan. <laughs> uh, morning routines, we already covered that. Evening routines, uh, we already covered that too. Favorite part of your job or career right now? just interacting with people I love doing like events and engaging with people in real life I think that's so cool I think before let me stop saying I think before I was doing this I definitely did not have like a crew or like a group of friends that understood me I have an amazing group of friends from college and whatever like they likely won't listen to us because I don't think that they understand it still but they don't they get me but they don't get me if that makes sense like they know like it's different I know I mean I know exactly what you mean yeah Yeah. but like they don't understand like why I'm gonna like sprint to Whole Foods when like my favorite granola is on sale or like they don't understand a lot of the things that like I go through that's what I'm for Um, (laughs) yeah exactly so I think having people that really you connect with and can lean on has just been it just warms my heart like I talk to someone at least once a day on the phone that like I've met through Instagram which is amazing Mm. yeah I love that what are your goals or ambitions for your job and brand and life that oh, you're most so excited many. about? Where do you see it in, say, maybe like five, ten years? Oh, this has been like huge the last like couple weeks. There's a couple of projects in the works that I'm like hoping come to fruition right now that are outside of the digital space. Mm, and I'll cool. leave it at that. Cool. But hopefully just more to come with food. Exciting. Yeah. Exciting. Very exciting. And congrats. Thank you. Hopefully. Right. I'll, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> yeah, please do. Um, oh, I wanted to ask you about this. So you recently started eating meat again after years of being yes. vegetarian. Can you talk about that experience? Oh, my God. I feel like epic. Food? Uh, I love meat. I'm actually going to Bear Burger tonight to get bison because that is how much I like love meat. There's one in my neighborhood right now. Have you been? I've been to a different one in Columbus when I was visiting Okay. It's like so, I don't know why I love it so much. Jordan makes fun of me. He's like, why do you always want to go to Bear Burger? I'm like, I'm a cheap date. Where we're meeting some friends there tonight for dinner. Um, The one in East Village? No, there's one in Hoboken. There's like 20 in the city. There's so many. But um, I didn't eat meat for like five years and I eat fish, but I didn't really eat that much fish because wild fish is expensive and I'm picky um and since eating meat in February I've had meat every single day since February like not one day has gone by when I did not consume some type of meat I'll eat anything besides I don't really love pork like I'll eat thick cut bacon but I don't like love pork tenderloin but any other meat you name it I'll eat it I'll cook it I'll do whatever and I've never felt better my energy levels my like appetite like, like, I used to eat a big dinner, and I would be hungry an hour later. Like, I just was malnourished. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't look malnourished, but I felt malnourished. Yeah. And I just, I'll never leave you again, bison or beef. <laughs> but that experience was rather, like, tumultuous free. You um, know I mean? Yeah. I, Jordan, so a bone broth company sent me an email. They wanted to send me bone broth. And I happened to be next to Jordan. I usually don't tell him the emails that I get a lot because... I don't know, he usually doesn't really get care. All emails, yeah. yeah, and he goes, oh, I really want that. Can you get that for me? Sure, why not? I get it for him. I think it sounds disgusting. He makes it. I think it smells really good. I'm like, all right, that's cool. It smells good. A few days later, he makes it again. It smells so good. So I have a sip. And I don't, in my head, it just didn't feel like a big deal to have a sip of it. He thought it was a huge deal. And I loved it. And then I made myself a cup. And I had a few cu- And then I couldn't even finish it. Like, I now I down, like, a cup of it a day, like literally a full cup or more of it a day. How long ago was this? And fe- this is February okay. or January. It was around the Super Bowl. And then I had the beef bone broth and that I couldn't drink more than a couple sips of and I still can't. It just doesn't taste. I love beef, but not the not the broth. I can cook with it though. And then I just start, I made pa- my paleo chicken tenders, which are on my blog. And I start, I made those. And I just was like, I need, I missed you, baby. Like I need, <laughs> I need you. And then I made beef. I love lamb. I've never had lamb until recently. I saw your spring bone bowl. Yes. I started going to spring bowl. Oh, because you met Sam. Yeah, yeah. I did my podcast. Oh, Sam and George. Yeah. Yeah. Um, lamb. So is nice. Amazing. And that place is amazing. Yeah, I love that place. It's so good. They have one of my favorite burgers in Manhattan. Their grass fed beef burger is unreal. Amazing. Um, but it was a very easy. I didn't have one stomach ache. I just. 
my body physically spoke to me and people think that I'm like crazy. I'm not like a medium or a psych. Like, like, but my body physically said like, you need meat, please eat it. That's so cool that you listened to that and didn't ignore that and didn't get caught up yeah. with labels. Cause I think that's something that we both really have in common that like labels are for containers, not people. Yes. I think going back to what we were talking about body image, I think a lot of our anxiety around that stems from labels and especially in the social media world of you know, my mom, there's a tool in my, in my book about journaling called concern yourself with you. Cause it's something my oh, mom used that. to always say to me as a kid. Yeah. And I really find myself, which is something we didn't actually talk about with social media, but comparison, like I often joke oh. that it's called comparagram because that's just what you do. You sit there like yeah. comparing what you're eating, comparing what you're wearing, comparing where you're living. And it's just a lot of things we didn't even know about people before. Like, we didn't know what people were eating before. Exactly. We just went through life not knowing, and well, it was fine. That's why I'll never do, and I did a post about this a while ago, I'll never do a What I Ate Wednesday post. Yeah. Ever. And the amount of brands that asked me to do it and include their product in, like, my What I like, I don't do them. People, yeah. if I did that, people would think that's how they have to eat every single day, yeah. and I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not going to tell you what to eat. And that's, that was me, you know, if I was in college now and found your blog, I would have been obsessed with it. And I would be like, okay, I have no idea what to do to feed my body and how to be a person in the world. And that girl looks really pretty and really happy and her life looks really great. I'm just going to do what she does to work out and I'm going to eat whatever she eats. Mm -hmm. And I would do that with people. And it made me crazy because bio-individuality exists and we're different human beings and we live in different places and our bodies are different and... I'm different. We change ourselves. You know, I'm different than when we started this conversation, you know. Well, that's what makes me crazy about, like, right now ketogenic is, like, very in, like, the keto Mm -hmm. diet. And I think that, sure, that works for a lot of people. But that something like that actually just doesn't work for me. Like, I went to go see – I have a functional medicine doctor that I see. And I got a bunch of blood work done because I'm having a lot of hormonal issues. And the first thing he said to me, not without even knowing me, just by reading my blood work, was – are you the type of person who has to eat every, like, three hours? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, is it because my blood sugar is not stable? Like, is it something I'm doing wrong? He goes, no, it's just your genetic makeup. Like, yeah. I'm made to eat frequently. That doesn't mean that my best friend is. It doesn't mean that my dad is. It doesn't mean that you are. Like, that's yeah. just my makeup. Like, sure, other people have that too. But, like, people just think, like, oh, keto sounds great. You don't eat for, like, 70,000 hours. Like, yeah. let me try that too. And it might work for you, but it might not. Your yeah. body might need that nutrients more. And it might you might hurt yourself yeah. if you're trying to force something that your exactly. body isn't... Like I tr- forced vegetarianism. Exactly. Look at that turned say. out. Yeah, yeah. And I've done all of the above. And, <laughs> and it messes with your metabolism, with your life. And that's the other thing too, you know, to deny ourselves, which I love about your work and how you focus on desserts and breakfasts because... We have so few sensory pleasures in life, yes. and to deny our, one of them is food, and to deny ourselves pleasure in that is really exactly. sad. So exactly. bringing that in is, is great. Okay, mm-hmm. how do you prevent and handle stress in your life, and what are you doing right now with this new? <laughs> uh, I'm on like three supplements, like natural supplements that I'm trying to take, that is, and I'll see. Well, actually, I've only been taking two because I forgot to order the other one, but it's coming soon, that I take, and I'm going to see if those help me manage my stress I do feel since taking them I also think it's gonna be half mental because I know that I have to try which I think is fine as long as it happens it happens that I'm just I'm supposed to feel more calm during the day I'm not supposed to feel like crazier and like just breathe a little move a little slower like I noticed over the weekend Jordan and I we were going for a walk and he was walking so fast and I was like I'm not walking fast like I am slow I don't care and I also am not, like, a rigorous workout fiend. Like, I don't run. I don't do spin. I don't do, like, weight training. Like, I'm pretty, like, easy when it comes to that. So I don't think that work, working out is raising my cortisol. I think the class is intense for me. <laughs> well, when you go, you'll see I modify the entire Okay, thing. good. Like, I, don't gonna, do I need to be next to you then. Oh, yeah. I don't do burpees. I actually just went to Portland to be a backup dancer, as aka the professional modifier, in a bar workout. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes. Well, I because so I like, love bar and Pilates and like very low impact. Exactly. Things. That's okay. what works. I need to go to the class with you because after yeah. I went in LA, I was like, I love this, but I don't think I could do it every day. I don't recommend doing it every day. I think like three days a week is like yeah. the golden. Okay. I want to go with you and number. modify. <laughs> yeah. I'm so down anytime. Yeah. I love that. Do you go to therapy? Oh. Do you meditate? No, but I would love what to is... go to therapy. Oh my God. That'd be so fun. Mm-hmm. I would really like to do that. I just, again, I'm like so cheap. I really should invest in a therapist though because I think that 
it has a lot of long-term benefits because it really makes you talk out loud to yourself and I have no problem talking. My mom and dad used to tell me that all they had to do was get me into a car and I would just rant when I was younger. Like, I just had no problem talking. You just need yeah. to, like, lock me up. That's what my um, mom always heard at parent-teacher conferences of, like, I talk too much. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> God, in guess, class. So. <laughs> um, lately, I inhale for five seconds and I exhale for five seconds. Feels good. <laughs> and it just, like, I just keep doing it until I don't feel good. Until, like, I listening, feel better. Everyone listening, do that right now. Yeah, inhale. I feel I just, calmer and a little bit lightheaded. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe that's more than five seconds. But it's good. I just feel, like, more chill. I mean, my cortisol likely still hasn't changed. I think it's, my cortisol has been, I think, been this high for a very long time. And it's funny because I have been asking to get this tested, and most doctors are just like, no, like, I'm sure you're fine. Like, mm, no, I feel it in my blood. Like, I'm telling you, yeah. like, because it's very common for people to be like, oh, I'm so stressed. Like, what a day. And, and we even glorify it in exactly. our society. Like, I'm really busy. Exactly. It's, like, almost a good thing to be busy. It's like, no, it's not a good thing. And I feel it in my blood that I my, my body is stressed. And it's not just I'm complaining that yeah. I'm stressed and busy. Like, I'm my like my body's in a state of stress. Yeah. Um, and I think that's also from, like, fluctuating in my weight my whole life yes. not being happy in my body like everything not eating meat definitely affected my blood and like my bloodstream everything is like it really and it, it all comes together yeah. so I'm still trying to find the happy balance like I don't have my menstrual cycle right now and I yeah. haven't had it too oh, you don't have it either yeah oh my god we have so much to talk about um and I need the name of your functional medicine I need a new I had a great when, one at home <laughs> when I get my period I'll tell you okay because I don't want anyone paying anything until they like until I see yeah. some like things but um I have a lot of tips so far it's, it, I feel bad because I shared this in the spring that I don't have my period on my blog and I get emails all the time from readers mm-hmm. asking what I did to get it back I'm like no I haven't like You'll know when I get my period back because I'll be running around New York naked and I'll be in the newspaper as the lunatic yeah. who was like doing jumping jacks ass naked in Times Square because they got their period. Like I got know. my, I didn't have mine for so long after my eating disorder, and then I got mine back maybe like a year and a half ago, mm-hmm. and it was great. It was amazing, and I had it consistently for like four months. And then when I moved, a little bit before I moved to New York, I stopped having it. And I thought it was maybe just, like, the change. And I was like, okay, yeah. it'll come back. And then I think my body just, like, hasn't balanced out to being here. And, like, the cortisol that that just brings you of, like, living in New York City. Yeah, so. I could believe it. But I'll yeah, tell you we'll what talk. I'm doing after. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully that will come about soon. And yeah. then we can do a period follow-up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another thing I always ask about in relation to, to stress and managing that mentally, so I wrote this book about journaling, which I can't you have now, it. is journaling, or obviously you write on your blog, but is writing and journaling something that you've ever done? Do you have any no. experience with that? Um, and I don't really write much on my blog unless it's like a meaningful something. When it's a recipe post, it's like three paragraphs. Mm-hmm. Like I don't like love writing but I when think I, you're a great writer like I read so much really blog thank today. you yeah. I think I'm a horrible writer my mom thinks I'm a great writer but just because my parents don't, don't like to write so um and I went to <laughs> revitalize <laughs> I went to revitalize by mind body green and they gave out journals and I did a reiki session with the reiki person reiki master there and she told me to start journaling because she told me that I don't oh, look <laughs> it's I have one next to my bed a journal oh, so I have well, 55 journaling prompts oh my god I'm gonna do it and I have only journaled one time in the month that I've been back from Rydalis. But she told me that, like, I don't feel safe and I don't feel safe in my body. And, like, mm-hmm. it all relates to the high stress. Yeah. Um, but now I'm, like, excited. This is There's just so many signs that are, like, yeah. leading me towards doing yeah. this. The so. universe is, like, getting you a pen. <laughs> like, I'm convinced if I say it in Portland that I would have gotten my period just because it's, like, natural Xanax is in the air. Like, I just didn't have a care in the world there. Yeah. You know? It was so nice. Yeah, well, we'll like manifest our periods together. We'll journal. We'll do the class. This Seriously, is, this is gonna be amazing. And working solo doesn't co-work. help. Yeah. yeah, working solo doesn't help. You need the female energy. They yes. say yes. Yes, so we'll get our periods synced up. Yeah, so oh my down. God. Okay, so this down. is gonna be amazing. <laughs> okay, so this just say your greatest lesson on the the following things. So we'll okay. start with greatest lesson on romantic relationships. Hmm. Find the person who balances you. Mm. Greatest lesson on friendships. Don't expect too much. Mm. Greatest lesson on family. They're always there. Just love them. 
greatest lesson on spirituality, God, what do you think happens when we die, all of that. Be open-minded because that's like, I'm very open-minded to that and I don't think many people are. Yeah. What is something that you're afraid of but you're doing anyway? How are you challenging yourself? Putting myself out there and failing. I'm petrified of failing and not making any money. I'm petrified mm. of being poor. Mm. That's like I think we all, I think the things that make us scared are like our groundedness like our yeah. first chakra things like yeah. safety security like you can't really be creative unless you know that you have enough money to pay your rent and exactly. do the things you want to do yeah I've been thinking so much about that which and if I you like well, you if you like nice things you need to make a nice living and it's hard yeah. to have all of your like I don't have a bi-weekly paycheck you know what I mean right so it's like goes scary. back to that uncertainty yeah and I think about this a lot like I think different people just like with food have different threshes threshold for uncertainty and change and mm-hmm. some people can be totally cool with that and I don't yeah. have it seems like we're similar in that way maybe a lot of ways yeah okay this is kind of a fun question so you can invite five people to dinner uh-huh. who do you invite and what do you cook for them or what will you guys eat and what do you hope someone in turns and asks oh you at the dinner God. party and what this do you this is a huge question I know, I've heard I know. you ask this I'll, but I didn't prepare myself I'll, we'll go through it slowly and what do you not want to talk about so first of all who's coming who's coming I have to invite my mom because if I don't she'll be devastated she sounds great I want to meet her thank you um she is great I don't know why I said thank you but yeah she is shout out to your um, mom what's your name Evelyn. Evelyn. Hi, hey, Evelyn. Mom. Um, Will she listen? Yeah, yeah. She, was, she does everything. Oh, yeah. I'll put on my stories and she'll know. <laughs> um, who else would I invite? This is hard. I mean, I'm happy to have an invitation. <laughs> I will invite you. I will definitely invite you. How many is that? Three? That's, that's three. There's three of us. And invite Jordan. So that's four. And so I have two more. Yeah. I'd invite Jordan from the Balanced Blonde. Amazing. We already know each other. I, so I want to invite all people that I know that like I think would really vibe well in the room. And I would invite Lisa Heim from the Well Necessities because she just is like magic to put into a room. Oh, I met her at ABCV the other. Oh, like, she co- loves that place. Yeah. Um, she's like she like won me over. Like I always joke, I did not like her until I met her in person, and then I was like, I love you. Aww. Like you're amazing, and she's one of my very close friends Aww, too. That's lovely. Um, yeah, I'd want people I know. Yeah. And what would I make? And I'd have my mother in law there too if I could. If there's like extra room, she could have my seat. Yeah. Um, cause she taught me how to cook. Oh, my really? Oh, yeah. Wow. So you didn't really grow up cooking? No, my mom didn't let me help. Oh, wow. <laughs> so is your mother-in-law a really great cook? Yeah. And she has a very similar like perspective on like food and how to prepare it. Oh, wow. So she taught me how to like touch raw chicken and like cut an onion. Wow. Um, and Jordan's a very good cook. Oh, that's so cool. And do you guys cook together, you and Jordan? Some We do in the winter. We don't in the summer just cause it's so nice out and schedules are crazy. But this past Sunday... We meal prep together for three hours. Oh, wow. Like, so insane. do you kind of like, because I'm really, when I'm cooking, like, this was something that I, like, had to work through. I'm like, you, like, can't be here and you can't watch. Like, I had to, I don't like really? how I just have to, because I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm like, um, I can't really, like, I'm just know. throwing things together. I'm so comfortable with Jordan. Like, I just don't care. Like, yeah. I guess that was We've been together for, anywhere. like, almost eight years. Yeah. And it's like, okay, we're, we're, we're done. Um, Like, there's no awkwardness at this point. But, um... What would we serve? I love making pizza, like fun pizza top, like artisanal, artisanal, yeah. whatever type pizza. We would do, ooh, I had this like beef pokey in Maui in June that I haven't stopped thinking about where they gave you like the cubes of beef and you quickly seared them for one minute on each side on this hot rock. We mm-hmm. would definitely serve that because it's really good. And then cool. we would serve the dessert that I made the other day. The one I get to try? Yeah, oh that's how much I freaking love this thing. And I don't know, I think like I that's it. So oh, what we, what will we talk about? Yeah, what do you hope someone asks you and what do you hope doesn't come up? I hope politics don't come up because I just don't like feel, I don't feel the need to like talk about them in like open settings. I think it's like personal um, and I think it's personal for everyone. And that's so I hope someone talks to me about is... Oh, I hope they just like the food if I'm making it. Like, I hope that everyone just, like, talks and asks me a question how they can make it at home. Yeah. Or my mom will just ask me to make it again for her. <laughs> um, I feel like that's I'll it. probably ask that as well. Yeah, I don't know. I 
just hope that it's can like, they take some home and yeah like an open conversation where people just like are relaxed and comfortable you know it's like wear a bra or makeup and yeah. just like be there and laugh laugh and have fun and we'd probably have like some type of either organic tequila or vodka I don't really I'm not a big wine person like I'll drink it if it's like a dinner Same. or something but I like I prefer like hard alcohol um, I think it's a better bang for your buck. Yeah. <laughs> There's the best wheatgrass margarita. Have you had it at no. Dimes? It's like one of my favorite places in the city. Really? Oh, we'll go and get them. It's so, I'm going tonight. I wish you could come. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that sounds so good though. Yeah. We'll go another time. I have organic tequila. Or no, not, I don't even know what that is. That's just oh, classic. I really like that label. It's really, really good. I love that tea. I think it's George Clooney's like. Oh. Well, I oh, like, he I like can come for dessert. Yes. <laughs> for the dinner okay so second to last question so this is really just a way to recommend things but um so these can be your ultimate favorites or new things that you really like but pretend you're trapped on a deserted island and you can only bring with you one book one movie one tv show and one food and we'll say one one podcast what would you bring oh my god a book i'd bring Woman Code by Lisa Vitti, because in oh, all honesty... She did the podcast. I only listen to it. Oh. It's, it's one of the only books that I've read and, like, didn't get, like, oh, my God. And I think it's because I'm so obsessed with hormones. I just mm-hmm. kept reading and reading and reading, and I, like, don't read. Jordan couldn't believe how much I was reading. <laughs> um, I'm trying to read more, because I feel like it could shut off my mind. A TV show? Yeah. Sex in the City. Oh, I'm rewatching it right now since oh I've been in God, the city. It's so which good. is re- have you watched it like since we're closer to their age? Oh yeah, I watch it like when okay, I good. like need something on the back of my laptop. Like I just like almost like a podcast. I just listen yeah, to it. Yeah, so I've been watching it in the evening since I moved here, and it's really? been such an interesting experience because I hadn't watched it since I wa- caught like reruns when I was like basically a child. Oh my God, no, it's and a so mess. now watching it where I can like actually relate to their doing what they're doing and living in New York and being like. Oh, that's Union Square. Like, yeah, that's you like understand it. Like, I had no concept of all of that because I'm from the Midwest. Yeah. And now it's like so fun to see the places. Oh, I love that. A movie. It's complicated. It's like my favorite oh, movie that's ever. Such a, is that that's with um, Meryl Streep, right? Yes. Oh, I need to rewatch that. I almost. We were on the way home from Hawaii, and we were like deciding between that and another movie, and we watched another movie, which was not good. But I wanted it's to watch that. Shit. I love it. I need to rewatch it. I haven't watched it like since I saw it in the theater. Really, mm-hmm. it's so good. Um, but I remember wanting my house to look like hers when I grew up. Because remember how great amazing. her kitchen is in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's to die for. Um, what was it like a podcast? Um, podcast. Yeah. Oh, I listen to so many podcasts. What do you let's give some of your favorites? I'll give a f- yeah. I'll give a few. I love Jordan Soul on Fire podcast. I like previous Bullet- podcast guests, Jordan Younger. <laughs> I like Bulletproof Radio. I like the Balance Bites and Paleo Woman. I like the lately I've been listening to the ketogenic diet one, but not because I like the keto <laughs> thing, but because she interviews a lot of really good people on there. So I like listening to it and I just love absorbing new information. Um who else do I listen to? I'm definitely now Lots I wish I had my podcasts. phone. Oh, I listen to all like health and wellness podcasts. Like no like fun ones, I guess you could say. But like to me, they're fun. One food item. Yeah, food that you would like, like kind of like last meal food, like your favorite oh, thing a meal. that you would never get sick of. Breakfast tacos. Ooh, I love breakfast tacos with real bacon. What about um, music, too? I don't know if I mentioned that or not, but mm, something I'm you... I'm not, like, a huge music person. Like, I like music, but I'd probably just pick bring John Mayer because I feel like I would listen to John Mayer during a lot of aspects of my life, like yeah. ups and downs. So I would, like, listen to him. I have very old taste in music. Like, I like, like, Bruce Springsteen and, like, yeah. Bon Jovi <laughs> and, like... Same. you I know, love 90s music. Yeah, me too. That's what I listen to yeah. on Spotify is 90s music. Yeah, it's the best. Um... Yeah, that's like it. But we can listen to 90s music. We'll get I know, I'm so excited. Times. This great. is going to be great. This is great. I'm so happy. I made a new friend. <laughs> okay, so the name of this podcast is Let It Out. Do you feel like I rang you dry for all of your wisdom? Is there yeah. anything that you wish that I would have asked you that you never get to talk about? Anything, any questions that you have for me? Any Anything else you wanted to share in the podcast? No, you really like hit every base. Like I think this is the most comprehensive podcast <laughs> that I have ever done Good. usually they're like 40 minutes so it's like boom 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 but That's I feel like you I let me rant this. yeah um no I don't think so I just Good. hope that people still like me after listening to this and realize that behind everything that may seem perfect and successful there's just still a vulnerable yeah. 
somebody behind there. Um, thank you. We did thank it. you. This that is so easy. fun. All right, guys, that was my episode with Rachel Mansfield. Follow her, make her recipes, tweet at her and me that you're listening and you're still listening to me rambling. She picked the emoji for this episode, so I'm going to let you know at the end. But first, quick reminder, come to the meetups next week. I would love to see you at Springbone from 6.30 to 7.30 on Thursday, November 30th, and you'll hear more about them next week. Their food is so good. The people are great. We'll all be there. We'll hang out. It'll be just such a fun, lovely evening. I can't wait to see you. And then let's also hang out on Saturday morning at 9.45 in the East Village at Divya's Kitchen. I'm doing a live podcast episode there. And then we'll all get brunch after. These are going to be really fun, chill events, and I can't wait to see you there. Also, have the most amazing Thanksgiving. And speaking of gratitude, I'm so grateful to our sponsors this week, careof.com. You can go to takecareof.com and get your personalized recommendation for supplements. They're great for travel because they come to you in this personalized container that are these little packs of exactly what you need supplement-wise. They source the best, highest quality ingredients. You actually save money than if you would have bought them on the health food store. And the best part about them is you take their quiz and then you can get 50% off your order of your supplements by using Katie at checkout. That's takecareof.com and use the code Katie, K-A-T-I-E at checkout for 50% off. That's half off your order. Thank you, Care Of. This show is also brought to you in part by Franklin and Whitman. They are the cruelty-free, plant-based, preservative-free skincare company that I love. They have men's grooming products, pet care products, hair care products. You guys, the holidays are coming up. You should probably check them out and buy them for your friends, buy them for yourself, buy them for your dog. Use the code Katie at checkout for 20% off your order. I love their products. Their face serum is probably my favorite right now, but I also love their hair serum. I also love their body serum. I don't know. I love them all, okay? I can't choose. Don't make me. I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Care Of. Thank you so much, Frank and Wit. Thank you, Rachel, for doing the podcast. Check out her New York City guide. It's really cool. And all of her recipes and just everything she does. She's a really cool lady. And I think uh, you guys obviously know that because you just listened to her for about two hours. All right. So if you're still listening right now to me rambling, she chose the emoji for this episode. It's her favorite emoji. And it's the dancing salsa girl in the red dress. You guys know the one. It's a very famous emoji. So if you're still listening right now, tweet that at her, Instagram that at her, and at me. I'm at Katie Dalebow on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, all social media. Let's be friends. And I'll see you guys next week for a brand new episode next Wednesday. Love you. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye.